are rolling. This is, we can understand you 100%, though. You have uh, okay, no problems. Good. Um, so I believe we were, we were in the, uh, in the apartment, uh, and Ray was walking down the hall with a box of donuts. Yep. So, uh, yeah, Akron, you get a ping and, uh, and Ray, Ray's coming up the stairs with a box or, or actually just walking up to the door with a box. Um, and, uh, so... You know, do you do you just come in? Provided it looks like a normal donut box, if you didn't like stuff it in an UPS box or something or a, <laughs> something like that. I'll probably, it looks like the uh, white box that donuts come in. Yeah, I'll yeah, probably so, let her in. So as soon as as soon as the door opens, uh, like, everybody's nose kind of twitches a little bit. So I come bit. in, I'm like thousands of kilo cows, <laughs> but I donuts. think we need it now, and then sets it on the counter. Assortment box for everybody. Before anybody can do anything, it. Uh, it seems like uh, Phyrixis has just materialized next to the box, and he has four <laughs> donuts, one in one in each hand, and then he just. Well, I he, bought he, twelve, so there's four of them. So <laughs> five yeah. of us. Five of us. He 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 doesn't care about ri- ratios. He disappears to the other side of the the room with with four can, donuts. Can this be a Carthen dozen? <laughs> Carthen dozen. <laughs> it's actually sixteen donuts. They an extra four. That might make sense. Uh. I'm totally gonna. Uh, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. When you order your dozen donuts, they ask, "Is there a Carthen in your?" <laughs> so everybody, everybody's probably taking donuts. Uh, Oliver certainly plows into them. Uh, Twitch will be taking chocolate with a chocolate donut with chocolate icing with sprinkles on. That's oh, just the typical assortment box. Well, yeah. I'm saying you, you get one of everything in your typical box. So. So, how are we all today? Ray has like bed hair and stuff. Yeah, clue what the agenda is. I believe we're taking Grand Line Central, old version, over the um, Rognant Bridge. Give me one second. No, I do not wish to back out of freaking roll twenty. I hate this stick and push to talk button. I'm definitely going to just take a jelly filled donut if one is in there. I'm sure there, there is. is. There is one just for you. Awesome. <laughs> you know, the sort of box usually has like two plain, two jelly filled, one of each of rarer types. I think the first convenience store we pass, I'm probably going to go in and get as much energy gum and soda as possible. Oh, this is not good. Uh-oh. It's not letting me back into roll 20. Da da da. In roll 20, I can see you were a minute ago. He just disappeared. <sighs> Your internet has gone to shit without you telling you. What the fuck? Okay, all right, I'm back. I can't see shit, but there we go. You can see what we typed. That's all you really need. Ooh, ah. Yeah, so I have I have marked your destination to the south. Um, to give you some scale, um, that big island to the top is actually like the size of Australia. Uh, okay. That that's what Mount that, or or at least at least a little bit smaller. Uh, that's that's kind of what amounts to continents on uh, on Centron Five, and Centron City, um, like the the main part of it, takes up those those two big yellow dots between where Centron City is labeled and the one to the northwest. But it actually spreads across most of that entire. Kind of island there. Like it is... What controls the branches? Is that a control station somewhere? Uh, each of those dots represents uh, like a major stop-off point, um, and uh, like those are actually large stations. 
How do they mostly transport here? Because I'm taking they probably have a large naval or hover fleet. Would be my guess. Uh, there are quite a lot of uh, of boats on Centron. Um, it like the fishing industry is huge here, and of course they've got like the standard kind of air travel and stuff. But ultra lobster man. But the uh, the the majority of travel because. Because storms are, are very prevalent here, air travel is a little bit less common. Um, uh, these these lines are all mag rails, and uh, it's it's like super efficient. Um, they're they're really high grade, um, and uh, like in the event of emergencies, they can basically shut down and then mag lock onto the lines. And, and like storms are a big thing on this planet, so. Are tsunamis like, a thing on this planet? Uh, yes, they are. How high are the uh, grav traits? Well, it's they're they're not regular occurrences. Um, but it's but the grav trains are there because it's a lot more dangerous to travel in the air uh, over these things than just lock down on a track. Uh, uh, and it's it's far more dangerous traveling by hovercraft or boat. Out of curiosity, did it always look like this, or did uh, was there some sort of massive melting of the poles or something? Oh, well, this is not the entire planet. Um, oh, okay. This is, if you look at the set, the 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 the, the, the southeast section of the map, it actually just says Centron Five Magline South. Uh, oh, one I thing see. you guys should note: you can zoom out. There is a a little slider bar at the top right of Roll Twenty. Um, and uh, you can also hold down the right mouse uh, button to to click and drag. Does yellow directly connect to red? Like, because someone literally hit a switch and the thing go from yellow to red line, or is it no? Like they're they're lines? separate. They're they're separate lines. Uh, each one has at least two parallel trains. So is um our, our destination where the green line ends? Is that where we're headed? Uh, well, no, you're Dillon heading down to Dellen. Oh, to Dellen. Oh, wow. Okay. So you're taking the yellow line uh, from Centron so City we don't all the way to down to Dellen. train changes. Yeah. You're going to be going through several stations uh, and a very large expanse of, of the ocean. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of your route. And I guess you're you're all talking about this uh, as as everybody's kind of getting ready in the morning. Like you've Akron, you've managed to get the Argus web linked up to uh, to to Oliver. Uh, you know you're you're getting a, a clear feed. Uh, you can pretty much see whatever's going on around him. I'm actually gonna um, ask if they had Wi-Fi capability. Uh, that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, actually, doesn't it say something about it has to be dumped? The recordings have to be dumped. I was wondering if it had any transmittability as well or not. Um, it that, only would, have that would make it more hours. detectable, so probably not. Quite possible, yeah. 24 yeah. hours, and then it has to be dumped. Uh, yeah, I think that's actually memory. probably more accurate. Like, I think you that's probably fine. plug you plug your compad into it to check to see if it's actually, you know... To do a diagnostic on it, and you get a feed from that, and then when you unplug it, of course, it's 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 on its own. Sounds good. Um. So yeah, is there anything anybody would like to do this morning? Like this is still really early morning. Um. Like, like seven thirty to eight o'clock. Ray asked Twitch if his apartment has running water anywhere, or like you know, like for shower he's, facilities. He's got a he's got a really small bathroom uh like unit in the wall ray claims that makes a quick probably cold shower but being as he's unsure whether twitch has hot water or not but uh i think <laughs> i think when you get over there um it uh like you press the button uh and, and you know it lets you get in there you you disrobe and uh the shower this is like a closes. fully enclosed uh, like place it isn't like you know like a curtain or anything right or if if it's a curtain, she's not gonna do it. <laughs> um, it's like what? It, it it basically comes out of the wall. Then you kind of like, like the door opens up out of the wall and you step into it. Uh, it's it's like a 
like a, a shower stall in there and you kind of put yeah. your clothes into a little thing um but yeah, yeah if, if you go for hot water it uh it's like insert credit chip it just that's cold water <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> okay fuck that shit <laughs> you're like damn this entire continent is so money hungry yeah uh two credits for a box of donuts <laughs> <laughs> they were they were gourmet donuts man um uh also you uh you were getting it for carthen as well so they had to be multi-species compatible uh anybody doing anything else are you guys are you guys just gonna head out as soon as ray gets Microphone out of the shower noted. Seems like a plan. I, I still want to hit a convenience store for energy drinks, given I'm probably going to be uh, monitoring security so, so, for a few nights. So are you doing that while everybody's still in the apartment? Yeah, I, I actually might run out and do that if uh, everything's okay. secure. So, like, Oliver, Oliver right talks the about corner, his... Akron. From the shower. Oliver, Oliver talks about his travel plans, like where you guys are. He's he's explaining how you're going to go to this, this uh, mag station and then get tickets and, and get on the train and stuff. And then Akron heads out to go get some supplies, quote unquote. Um, you know, I, I assume you leave your security equipment running when you leave, right? Yep, absolutely. I'll probably uh, show Mark to keep an moment. eye on it. When he gets back, you must not miss anything. <laughs> okay, so... Well, while um, he's gone, I want to make funny faces at uh, one of the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll definitely show Marcus how to use it since uh, Ray's in the shower, and I have a feeling that uh, he took a bullet for the guy. So I'm gonna figure he's on the level. Oh wow! Like Marcus, he's actually Akron seems to be treating you like a human being. That's, you, you hear that? That's right, on the level. <laughs> yeah, like you're 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 thus far the only person that Akron has acknowledged as some sort of professional. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. Right, Akron so, ever gets shot, he'll change his mind. <laughs> Akron, you head down the street. It's not very far to the convenience store. Uh, it's 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 about eight o'clock. Um, Ray's Ray's getting out of the shower. You know, you're you're getting dried, getting in your mm -hmm. your, yep. your dry clean back up again. clothes inside the the stall and whatnot. Um, you know, you you're 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 out of the shower. You're your hair is still a little bit damp. It seems like this is a really it's cheap better shower. better than bed hair. Everybody's, everybody's kind needed. of like packed up and ready to go. Everybody's just waiting for Akron to get back. Do you guys, do you guys like just go ahead and go to the cars and, and wait for him to like meet you, meet you there or, or what? We could calm him and see like, Hey, how long are you going to be? You know. Uh, if you do, uh, he's only going to be another couple minutes. Oh, okay. All right. We'll just wait around a couple minutes. Then. All right, Akron, you you exit the convenience store. There's like a little ding, 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 and you know you you walk out, um, and the the robot server is like, thank you, please come again. Um, and you're you're making your way back to the uh, the apartment. What do you have in your your arms? Like you just energy drinks? Did you buy anything else? Probably energy drinks, some junk food, and. Um... Like Insta Burgers? Energy gum, energy gum, of course. <laughs> they have Insta Burgers. See, look, they, totally Insta it's burgers. like, you know, it's like a little wrapper, and when you open it, this burger just goes poof. Well, it's, it's, it's <laughs> actually totally like, it's it's a wrapper around a burger, and it's almost like you unzip it, like you, you tear off the seal, and as soon as it does, it chemically activates the burger, and it, 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 it MRE cooks. cooks up. <laughs> yeah, it burger. does. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, I'm going to grab a bag of those. It's, along it's actually, yeah. it's, it's probably like, modern mcdonald's quality so it's not it's not terrible for like a like a an insta burger yeah, although it's like it's, it's still quality, not homemade I mean, it, it's it's a burger to me so yeah um so you're coming you're coming back um probably just a big old like not even really a big bag but like one of those 7-eleven bags worth of uh general junk food and energy stuff Alex, Akron, Akron would you this figure. would you like to make um a uh, a perception check? Sure. All figure. right. What so would I have to roll for that. It's uh you have you're unskilled in it, um. But uh, let's see here. 
I think this would be a, a wisdom check, so I think you're rolling at minus one. Minus one, okay. Yeah, two two D six, uh minus one. Rolling two D six. Still rolling. Wow, that roll is taking a while. Did the server go down or something? Ooh. What the hell is that? Um, I. I'm my test seems to work. Did you guys not, get all that? I'm not like, seeing. Crazy, I'm not uh... seeing tests. I could see Marcus Romanov's one, two, yeah, three. That's all right. I'm not seeing that. Uh, did did Victor and I get disconnected somehow? Don't know. See Twitch. So error fetching the roll. Please try again. And then I oh, got like uh, refresh a two page thing. Of... Everybody else is coming through. We haven't seen anything from you. Yeah, I guess right, just refresh right the now. page. Refreshing right now. It said error, uh, error fetching roll, and it dumped like an entire page worth of HTML on me. So hold on. <laughs> yep, I, yep, I would call that a problem. At least it's not just me. Wait, unless maybe I'm doing the format wrong. Is it? It's not two d six minus or two d six minus one. Is it? Is it's uh, slash two d six minus one. Slash roll, just minus one. I think uh, error fetching yeah. your roll. Let me just try rolling Your connection six. to the server has been interrupted. Jesus. Let me just try rolling 2d6. And see if we can just take a point away from it. Um, oh, I see the I see the test now. I see a I guess five. I, I have to take it minus one away from it. For some reason, when I put the minus one in there, it's giving me error fetching roll. Um, so are I you putting spaces? I don't think it'll do minuses. You can do plus negative one. Are you sure? I thought I you could well, do... I guess it should. What? I've done try negatives. It again, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it'll do negative. Minus. Yeah, every time I put a negative at the end, even with a space or without a space, it just freezes on rolling the dice and says there was an error fetching your roll. Please try again. Yeah, mine's yeah. just fine too. It must be an issue of rolling. God. Not well, only am I having... It's easy enough to just subtract one. All right, I, rolled a four, I will. Basically. I'm gonna go grab some dice, and I will just inform you of what the rolls are. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Hey, the plus one doesn't work either. For the first time, it dumped a whole page of friggin' HTML code. Now it's just giving me the error fetching your roll stuff. Someone's probably DDoSing there? roll twenty. I would not be surprised. Yeah, I could see something like that happening. Normal text, yeah. Oh, ouch, uh, Victor, you rolled a three, so you got a two. Yeah, Oof. so that was even uh, worse than the five I rolled. This got a four, <laughs> technically. Oh god. Um, yeah, so you 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 have absolute like this is, you know, this is gonna be a great day, Victor. Like, uh, the sun is <laughs> the sun is out. <laughs> You've got you've got your Insta burgers ready for later. You've got your energy drinks. You're just walking down the street. Uh, like, if I'll if this was if this was my, LA, uh... if this was LA, right about now you'd be getting spin kicked by some hobo. But instead, <laughs> um, you just hear uh gunfire. I'm gonna say that I had my headphones uh, basically on up until now, so the gunfire would be the first thing probably loud enough to get my attention. Okay, um, so everybody in the apartment, um, you know, you're, you're waiting for, uh, for Akron to, uh, to come back, and, uh, you, you hear gunfire, um, it, it's very close by, um, and, uh, but, but, like, it's not, your, your room is not, like, uh, imminently under attack, apparently, um, a couple questions. We're not on the ground floor, are we? No. No, you're okay. on floor two. Definitely aren't right. you? Um, I didn't pay for the ground floor, and I definitely am not on the top floor. Somewhere in between. You're on floor two of two. Oh, well, I am on uh, top floor then. Does this, does this gunfire sound like it's coming from inside the building or outside? Uh, This is like kind of a motel complex. It sounds like it's coming from outside on the street. Does anybody take a look at the cameras? Or do they go to the windows, or do you guys like hunker down? Like this is very close by, like within within a hundred feet at least. 
probably closer, like probably much closer. And it sounds like it's like the fire is coming in your direction, but you know, you're not seeing bullet holes in the walls or anything. I mean, if there's like a window, I'll take, I'll basically like move a curtain aside and take a peek out. All right. There yeah. is, there is a gray, um, uh, car outside, uh, like parked very close by where, uh, where your vehicles are actually parked. Uh, the, the windows have been rolled down. It looks like, uh, like there are a couple pistols being pointed out of the windows and they're like lighting up the floor beneath you. Um, uh, and... uh, does this happen a lot to you, Twitch? <laughs> <laughs> Not normally, it, it... no. So, so Victor, you, you hear this gunfire and you look up and you see a car basically doing a drive-by of the apartment directly below Twitch's. Is there anywhere nearby, like a car or something, I can get the hell out of sight? Um, yeah, yeah, there's there's cars parked along the, the street, so like you, you, you duck behind a car. I want to get behind the car and I want to uh, speed dial, I guess, uh, Marcus and some of the ones who left him with the data pad. Uh yeah, so um that happens in the you know after after Actually, like can I can I video call my data pad? Yeah, do you you like you Skype call it or something? Um, yeah, I want to video call him because I'm going to uh, once I finally get him on the line, I'm going to try to peek the camera up so you can see what's going on from this perspective. Yeah, yeah, you can totally do that. So so the the so the com line just starts ringing. Uh, like, you're, are you dialing Marcus's com pad or the one that you left? I'm uh, going to try to video dial the one that I left first. Okay. If I don't get an answer, I'll try Marcus's. All right. Um, so this gunfire is happening downstairs. Um, Oliver has uh, appeared like against one of the walls with his his mag pistol. Um, Phyrixis has his pistol out, and it looks like he's he's like kneeling down, like kind of facing the door, and he's he's kind of looking over at Twitch. Um, I'm crouched down at that window with my gun out, just and, uh, keeping an eye like, out. I want perhaps to over over the, the gunfire, over the, yeah. If if you're if you're checking the cameras, you you're actually seeing an incoming call over the uh, the the compad. Uh, do you do you answer it? It says it's it's like coming in from Akron. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you you tap it open and you you hear the gunfire from a different perspective and you see like. The sweaty, panicked face of Akron as he's like holding it against him. Like this is imagine like really noobish war reporter kind of filming. Uh, Akron, so like, what what do you say? As soon as I get out, I'm going to uh, probably look. I'm probably going to make a motion at him instead of even saying anything, and then try to peek the camera up of like if I'm behind a car, I guess just a little bit over the car hood so give him a view of what's going on from this perspective. And then after I give him a good look, I'll probably motion or bring the camera back down to myself. So uh, kind of being like, what the hell do you want me to do? Look, I guess on my face. Yeah. So you guys, you guys see uh, like a really shaky, slightly tilted uh, image of, of the street. Um, it's not perfectly lined up. Like he's, he's trying to aim it at the, at the vehicles, but he can't see what he's aiming it at. So it's it's a little bit like he's actually aiming at a tree to the side of the road or something. Um, but you can still see the car. Excuse me. And um, like after after they unload like a full clip, uh, the the pistols go back in and the windows roll up and this car speeds off. Uh, what what is everybody's uh, everybody's reaction? I'm going to try to zoom in on, if, I guess if it has a license plate, I'll try to probably zoom in on that. I might even expose myself a little more if they're driving clearly away from me to try to get a good shot at it. Yeah, you only see a few people on the street at this hour, uh, and they're all basically, like, hunkered down behind cars and stuff. None of them are sticking their heads out to go look at this thing, but, you know, I don't think these people see you and see, like, this person's trying to get our license or something. Yeah, I figure um, that uh, I kind of almost be trying to look like, you know, bystanders of their cell phones how anytime anything goes down anymore everybody pulls their cell phone out but yeah uh, they they peel out uh and uh and go down one of the side streets and disappear from view um what do you do as soon as they're out of view i'm going to probably scream i'm coming up onto the uh actually you know what i'm gonna say to get your asses down here and i'll meet you at the cars i'm gonna head for the car and try to get it uh <laughs> i don't know if that was get us or not, but i think we should take the chance and leave while we can Twitch, does anybody live underneath you? 
I have no clue who lives underneath of me. Do I have keys to the cars or uh, the truck, or do I not have keys? Um, I imagine uh, that Akron, you're paranoid enough that like, did you collect everybody's keys after after you guys got into the into the Twitch's apartment? Like, okay, children, like, give me give me your your passes or something for the night. Like, would you have done that? Probably wouldn't have collected everybody's this keys. Probably but it's only the rental maybe, car this keys. Probably only my key and maybe one other one. Yeah, key, keys to what exactly? What, well, what if there was keys. a backup key, I would have tried to request that. But if there's no backup key, I a key. Well, there's it. there's got to be there's a key for each vehicle. Oh, oh, those keys. Well, Ray obviously has the key to one because she's driving it. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So Ray's got one of them. She was sleeping in the the car. So you've got like the key to the truck. Uh, and and so like you you guys hear Akron shout like, "Get down to the cars!" What what do you do? Mr. Green, I think we need to get moving. He he nods. He he runs over, grabs his his leather jacket from uh, from the couch, and uh, he's still Ray holding his bag bags pistol. and what's left of the donuts, and heads out, heads out the door first. Did you even put yeah. the bags in the room? You They're probably in the still car. in the car. Technically, I guess. The, the I think bag. I think Oliver probably grabs a donut and just sticks it in his mouth uh, as as he's leaving the room. There's probably um, like two left in the box. <laughs> every everybody kind of moves out in a big horde. I will make a point to grab my uh, my junk food before I tear off for the car. <laughs> okay. Does anybody grab um, Akron stuff from the table? Yeah, I'll take it. I'll I'll assist in taking that stuff. He okay. Left there's there's not a whole. I don't know how much quote unquote stuff there is. Okay. Um. Brought my camera out from outside the door. Is somebody gonna grab that? It. Somebody has to remember that. So probably not unless somebody really argues that they do. And unless like unless Akron, you come over the comms again. Grab the camera. Grab the camera. If anybody, the, did, the one that's probably like... screwed in. If anybody did, I would think Marcus would probably have the only chance at it, given he was looking through the cameras. But it depends if he would be the thinking about grabbing it or not. Marcus, are you? What are you focused on in this instant? Uh, I would say through the course of the past couple of seconds, go to the window, kind of look out, then see there's there's a a call coming in. Go over and and see you know give Twitch the what the fuck are you oh, <laughs> and then. Uh, Okay, let's let's all pile in and go. So just grab a whole bunch of shit, like whatever okay. is quick and handy, and just get it and leave. Okay, so the the camera gets left. That's fine. Um, you're still gonna have one camera in the truck. Cool. Um, and yeah, so everybody runs out into the street. You can hear sirens in the background, but it sounds like they're far away. Like this neighborhood maybe does not have its own individual security force, but they're part part of a larger. Uh, like zone that at least pays for security. Um, so you can assume the security will be here momentarily. Does everybody just run to the cars, get in and go? Yep. Absolutely. Oh. I mean, race okay, start, so... get in and start in the car. I'd um, like to strongly advise, uh, even if, I, if I'm in the truck or the car, where would I be? Uh, where would they? I, I, I imagine you're in the car. car. I'm, I'm going to strongly advise Oliver that we completely change our travel plan to get to his destination. Obviously, somebody's uh, onto us, and it's uh, not looking good. And I'm also going to recommend that uh, you not tell everybody what the travel plan is until we actually are uh, there. Right. He he just looks at you. He's like, "Let's let's get out of here. We'll we'll talk on the way." All right, um, so everybody gets in, and I step on the gas. Yeah, so I assume I assume the the cars are basically the same as yesterday. Uh, Twitch and Twitch and Phyrexis in the truck, and everybody else in the car. Yeah, I, uh, so. I would assume so. All right. As you guys are pulling out, uh, you notice there's just a, a shit ton of large holes in the wall and the, the door uh, to the apartment below. They were pissed, which is, holy, right? holy shit. Um, and uh, the, the, the window is totally shot out. Um, it doesn't look like there's any lights on down there. Uh, you can't see anybody inside because there were curtains there, but the curtains are like all torn up. Uh, it looks like somebody put like at least thirty or forty rounds through this thing, and and you have to guess like if if they had thought it was if they had done that to your apartment, um, it would have done some serious damage. Like you can't see how at least one or two of you wouldn't have been shot. So so you you see this destruction and you you take off, um, basically just driving out of the neighborhood. I assume yeah. while you try to work things out. 
All right. So what's the plan? Where are we going? Um. So Akron, Akron suggests that they change all the travel plans. Uh. Oliver, Oliver looks like really, really distraught. Like this, this building just got shot up. Um. And uh, he's. He, you know, he's he's got his head on a swivel. He's looking out the windows and stuff. Uh, in the other car, Twitch, like you can see that uh, Phryxus is really worked up. Like he's breathing pretty hard. Like he's got his his pistol in his hands and he's like looking out the window and stuff. Um, if he knew about uh, the attack, Twitch, uh, he is doing like a phenomenal job acting, like he didn't. Um, but yeah, but back in back in the actual car. Um, Akron, as you're bringing this the subject up of changing the travel plans, he says, "Well, there, there's there's really only three options. We the, the mag the mag train is 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 the primary mode of transportation on this planet. We could we could take that. Uh, there's there's two trains that that go that direction. Um, there, there's thing, obviously um... air air travel, but that's going to have to be chartered." Uh, and he kind of looks at you like I, I didn't really think you wanted names anywhere. Uh, then then he he kind of looks a little bit distasteful and he's like, "There's always boat, but that that could take a while." And it it's a he look he looks distasteful mentioning the boat. I'm gonna pull up the uh, the map, basically the one that we have on the uh, D20. And I'm going yeah. to say uh, first thing I, I recommend that you book an apartment. Or book a hotel at the uh, island in your name uh, in the northeast there, whatever that one of the red line stops at. Book one for uh, this evening. And then what I recommend we actually do is take the yellow line all the way to the west, then take the green line down to that continent, that little tiny island, and then take a boat from there to Delon. Well, that what is every... is probably a matter of months. What's the distance on this map? That's gonna That's going to, like... They that's have Australia. really high tech, like... efficient, efficient boats. That'll be that'll be the travel of a couple days. If that's the size of Australia, I would think that would probably be uh, about a day or so, maybe a day yeah, and a half. Yeah, a, cu- a couple days. A couple days could work, but I mean, with the rail lines and stuff figured in, yeah, definitely. The rail line, it's basically like a a long day's travel down there. Like going at the the high speeds that the rail line goes. Or optionally, we could take the yellow line down to the uh, smaller island and split to the red line from there, and then take a boat from that continent. Sorry, I don't have the names of these places, but uh... yeah, yeah, it's it. I, I didn't put them there. Um, I I can I can tell which ones you're you're uh, talking about. And also, um, if you have your pointer on and you hold down left click, you can ping on the map. Oh, uh, that's very useful. It pings yeah. your color that you assigned. Yeah, it, it'll ping for your color. So if you're talking about someplace in specific, you can always ping. I definitely think he wants to book a uh, something in his name up here. He he thinks that's and a very. Then we head this way. He thinks Akron, that's a, a I do very not have intelligent boat skill. Just just letting you know, I do not have tr- I do not have training in a boat. Yeah, Oliver looks super dubious at at boats. Um. Like hey, do, you, do you have any do you have any cultural hang-ups about boating since your your planet is is like faced with sea monster attacks? Um It's not under sea boating, so probably not. Would there be any um He doesn't I, I mean He hasn't really boated much. He usually just stayed on the island, but Okay. Would there be any like rentable That's why she has no training helicopters in, it, but... in either of these places? You could technically rent an aircraft. Ray um, looks at Akron seriously. Do you have training in an air vehicle? But if you do, you're basically going to have to, uh, you know, pay a pilot. Um, and uh, you know, air travel is much more lax in this world than ours. But you're still going to have to, you know, rent this thing somehow. And it's a, a much let like air travel uh, on the planet itself is much less common than just like mag travel or 
surface to space travel. Um, so you would know that like this is definitely something you can do, but there's there's the poss like you're gonna have to take some serious precautions if you don't want any sort of paper trail at all. Whereas you can easily buy tickets on a mag train uh, with just credits. Raid would just flat out suggest that we just take the mag train. And I will say that there are two mag trains on the yellow line, like they that they run parallel, um, and uh, like they don't leave at the same time. Obviously, they're supposed to basically alternate to try to make things more efficient. You could, you could, you know, take the one that's supposed to be heading out in the morning, or I guess maybe if you hide out somewhere today, like you could take the one that's heading out in the evening. Like maybe they don't expect that. I don't know. That would mean like that hiding be... out in the city another day. That would be Marcus's recommendation. We could still just take the mag train, but just as you know, as soon as possible. Maybe they think they've already, you know, done us all in, and before they're any wiser, we could be halfway down there. If he's absolutely intent on taking that mag train, I recommend that we um, use the credit not like card he's or something with the a mag train, right? No, he is not. It's just, this is a, this is how uh... travel to Dellen is basically done. If he has a credit card, I recommend that he book the mag train now that goes all the way all the way to the west to down here. So people maybe think we're going that way Act before okay. we get on the so other have, We have wasted enough mana, enough of this good man's money. He, he just... no, he he waves he waves it off and he says that's a sensible precaution. Um, and uh, like as you're saying that, he he literally just books uh like an entire car. Uh, or or a compartment on uh, the westbound um, mag train, and uh, on on the yellow line, and like he he does that just just there. It, it costs him you know a fair chunk of change, but he does it. That's basically heading off the western edge of the map. Cool. Um, that might not necessarily make a whole lot of sense with people who know his like his destination, but it's not necessarily clear that people know his destination at this point. I'm hoping people will think that uh, he's doing exactly what I was suggesting he might do in the first place, and then uh, maybe try and send some people that way at least, take a little heat off of us. All right, so you guys head to the station, and are you going to, uh, are you going to take the, the, you know, the first train out, or are you going to try to wait in the city and take one later? Uh, there, I mean, there's obvious risks uh, for waiting. Book the um, first train. I would rec I would think we take the first train. Otherwise, they could figure out he's not on the train that got booked and take. No, he's on the other one, anyways. Yeah, I think get the get off of here, and also he might want to uh, puff his jacket up like when he was sleeping, so he's not necessarily uh, having his face stuck everywhere. As yeah, much he, as possible. he puts his collar up. He he ruffles his hair a bit. Yeah, um, I, I would say the the sooner we can get out of town, the better. Okay. Um, yeah. So so you guys head to the station. Um, what did okay. I just do? Jesus. Uh, my connection oh. to the server is still gone, so I don't know that I can control your view. Dice appears to be working again. Oh hey, yeah, the dice are working again now. Oh, I I. Apparently it's not for me. I'm gonna reload. Got be that. Um, if I can't reload in, I'm just gonna have to roll everything myself. Good thing those were test rolls, Fosty, because those were horrible. Well, yeah, yeah, that's those true. Were pretty bad rolls. Thank man. guys. <laughs> botch and a near botch. Did somebody just ping? No. Nope. On the map. Uh... Did now. Oh, somebody did now. Oh wow, I saw like a ping that must have been from a long time ago then. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, yeah, I, very old my, ping. my connection to the server has been interrupted again, so uh we're just gonna have to kind of play this uh Wing it. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, like fortunately you guys can at least see the map. I had an image of the actual train station prepared. Um if we get to some sort of scene that requires a map, uh I'm just literally going to have to describe it, I guess. You could um, throw it up on Imgur and just link us to that if you want us to see a map. I mean, it's not ideal, but it would. Uh, it would. It would certainly a take a lot longer. Um, I'll just try to explain things. Uh, 
there's probably not going to be a whole lot. So you guys get to the station. Um, mag trains are the primary transport on this planet. Uh, this is like a very busy station. It's not the only one in Centron City. Like you can see that there's several other large <laughs> stations. Um, there are thousands of people here, even this early. Like some people use this com to commute to other islands. Other people just like you know, are are taking the train like you are to 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 relocate. Um, it's like this is pretty much as busy as the starport is. Um, does anybody have anything specifically they're they're doing as you're going through uh, to to get the tickets? Like he's he's following you. Um, you guys have to worry about the luggage, of course. It's gonna uh, have that to was be, gonna be my onto... primary concern. What we do with all of this crap? Yeah, it's gonna have to be loaded onto the train. So like, when you're when you're going like to get the tickets, train, or just we have to load it yeah, it's it's, it it's got it. It's got a it's got a, a rear section of the train that's dedicated to cargo. Um, like if. You you guys pull up and you can park in temporary parking, um, and uh, and like you go inside. And d is does anybody specifically stay with the cars, or does everybody just go in with Oliver and everybody else? Well, I I'm guess I'm to... buying tickets again, so I I'm gonna re... give Oliver the cred stick look. I guess I'll. Stay I'm gonna with stay, the with the, uh, stay with the stay with the cargo for as long as possible, whatever we've got carried with us, and also ask. Uh, make sure to ask Oliver if there's anything that we should have with us and carry on uh, that might be, you know, something that they would, something that uh, potentially one of his enemies might want, uh, or anything that might get stolen. If there is, it should probably be with us rather than the, uh, the cargo container on the train. Um, he thinks about it and he says, uh. I'm not sure if it if we can get it through security, but the biometrically locked uh, foot locker uh, would be handy if we took it. Uh, that's that's basically all he says in, in regards to that question. Everything else, you know, it's locker fine. To... Seems to be the kind of thing that they wouldn't let you have for carry on. Um, well, like you guys. You guys are basically renting. Uh, this is this is like a twenty, you know, twenty plus twenty four hour uh, trip. So you guys are renting uh, a compartment. Uh, it's not like you're an airliner where you've got like rows of seats. Like you you're, you're renting compartments um, because this is a long ass travel and you're traveling at high speeds. Um, so you can have some some onboard luggage with you. It, the the matter and, and he brought it up is you know can you get things through security like it seems to imply that maybe there's something in here that might set security off um maybe that kind of rings things with everybody else like can you get your weapons through security like you you, you don't know like maybe you're gonna actually ask what what are the security protocols here what do they look like so um, cargo and this kind of like if you tried to take something illegal in your luggage, uh, not even carry on in an airliner, you'd be in trouble. So, well, if there's something that basically rings up, um, is prohibited, you're probably not going to get arrested. But they're just going to say like you cannot bring this on here. Uh, you can check it. Um, they're not going to like let you take human slaves or something. But pretty much everything else is like there's it's not like super illegal. Um. As, as far as security, um, there's a couple fairly, you know, well-appointed uh, um, guards here and there at the, the exits. It's not like airport-level security, um, but it's not subway-level security either. Uh, there's there's a couple guards at, at the, the exits to the, uh, like the actual terminals and stuff. Um, and it seems like there's people like who, who there might be a couple people on the train itself. Um, and it seems like that's one of the things about this, the rail service is like the rail lines themselves hire these people to make sure that people feel safe when they're on the trains. Um, you know, that being said, this is, this is still a private institution. Um, you have to assume that like. Like I, do you just? 
I don't know what you you assume. So do you do you talk to the person at the desk and ask like what what can you carry on? Actually, b before that, can I do maybe like a like a culture criminal check to see if I might know of a way to kind of sneak something through a security like that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see here. We can um, maybe distract a, a security person or something. So, so shuffle it like, through real quick. What are you trying to do? And like, you're you're just basically going ahead, like assuming that all weapons are are banned from from the uh, the train and stuff. Wait, would that mean that our weapons would have to get checked? Is that what you're trying to sneak through? I'm trying to sneak through that big crate that he wants. Okay, yeah, that's that's an interesting choice. Um, yeah, let's see here. Your your culture criminal is a zero. Um, this would be an int check, so that's another zero. I will roll this 2d6. Um, this is going to be a somewhat difficult check. Um, but if you if you make it, like you can somehow basically sneak it through with the rest of the luggage, and it just it'll potentially get through like maybe it doesn't get scanned um uh you got a six uh that's that's literally one shy of what you need so like you kind of know what you need to do like um it has to like all luggage that is, is going to be checked basically passes through their version of an airport scanner um what you what you think you want to do is uh is get it like get it into line and then come up with some sort of excuse Can I to have it. With my knowledge of it, as well. Uh, yes. If you roll, oh yeah, if you roll help, uh, with an yeah, yeah, and it's perfectly acceptable to say you do it afterwards. Uh, like maybe you guys are brainstorming. I will roll your culture criminal for you, and if you succeed, you add a one to his roll. Uh, what is, let's see here. Zero, so it'd be a plus one probably for my stats. Good question, yes. too. What kind of access do we have to our uh, cargo when we're on? Oh, the shit, train? you rolled a 12. Um, yeah, too, too bad you didn't do the main roll. Um, yeah, but you, you ended up adding a one, <coughs> excuse me, to his roll. You get a seven. Um, you know that uh, there is a way for you to set off the security monitors ahead of you to where like they're gonna have to reboot things and like manually check them um for for a temporary amount of time so like it's not gonna be like your 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 container is setting things off it's like somebody else it's gonna look like somebody else is ahead of you just broke the scanner uh and they're gonna have to like it's gonna slow down the line and it's going to force them to manually check in that situation you think you could possibly bribe somebody to just let this through since it's, it's just down to the human element um i'll let you i'll let you kind of simmer with that for a second victor you were asking something oh, i was wondering what kind of access we had to the luggage when we were actually on the uh train or if we would be absolutely restricted from getting to the luggage that we checked uh um, once we're on board. you cannot get to the like the stowed luggage stuff because it's it's basically like the airline luggage uh, container, and like they can't have people just randomly going back in there because you, like, it's a generic container where everybody's luggage is stored, and you wouldn't be able to protect people's belongings if people were allowed in there. Oh, absolutely understandable. That's what I was wondering. But that's you you cool. certainly have like a small selection of of things that you can bring yourself. Like this this Footlocker is pushing it, but it's still within bounds. And that would be in your compartment yourself. So, like, you know, you're 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 thinking about this, and I guess, I guess, um, Twitch and Marcus are kind of mulling over how to get this thing through through security. Like, you guys picked up enough that like, it it Oliver thinks that it, it won't necessarily make it through, but you're you're thinking maybe we 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 could get it through anyway. You're brainstorming on this. Akron um, will uh, say that if they do want to go with that plan, since he doesn't actually have any uh, 
have any weapons or anything that would technically be illegal on him right now. He's probably, uh, his data slab wouldn't even really look illegal at the second because it's not actually at that point. So I might actually be the person in front uh, that sets it off if they want somebody to kind of keep him distracted and yeah, it's really like a clutch. To the point where it's taking a lot of time. You could probably, I could probably persuade them to let it through. The only thing is, what would be in a box like that that required refrigeration that we would have to have? It doesn't Unless have. you guys have. Been... Nothing was said about refrigeration. Oh, it's just, it's just. Yeah, they don't know that. What it was. No, nothing was said about refrigeration. Okay, so it's just like a, a biometrically locker. Sealed. Yeah. Uh, and it's obviously reinforced. Um. Big heavy metal case. Yeah. Um. So like, do you guys like this? Sounds like a plan to me. Do you do you guys want to have Akron go up ahead and be the jackass like two people ahead of you who sets off this uh this security thing to where like everybody has to be manually checked? But you're not, you wouldn't be very far behind him, so it wouldn't like it wouldn't really severe severely inconvenience you. But everybody behind you would have to wait like a long time. Uh, you're, that said, you're still gonna have to buy your tickets first. Um, uh, like let's, we'll 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 have you guys brainstorming that. Who I, I guess Ray, you would be buying the tickets. Like yep, guess I'm said. buying tickets again. Um, Oliver, Oliver's coming with you. Um, so you guys approach the uh the, the counter. You only have to wait through like a, a small line. And uh, there is a uh, there is a very very attractive um, let's see here why did that close one time I need it there's there's a very attractive Tarlin uh, male. Uh, behind the counter, uh, he's he's kind of like pinkish red skinned. Um, he Tarlins are like the most humanoid of the humanoids. Uh, they're they're very close to humans. Um, was, was this the space elves? Yeah, they're kind of like aquatic space elves almost. Um, he he greets you, Ray, like with uh, with a, a brilliant smile. Um, I don't know if if you're into Tarlins or not, but if you were, like this is a this guy is almost of model standards. That's precisely and, why he's at the. the uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's why he's the desk person. He he's got long black hair, like pulled back into a ponytail. He says, "How may I help you, Miss?" And and after a moment, he he uh, turns half stunned for a moment. Yeah. Uh, the, yes, uh, we'd like to get five tickets, right? Five. Um, to Dylan. Uh. So um, Oliver kind of leans over and he's and, and he says uh, six. We have oh yeah we haven't talked about it either. six six tickets. Sorry. He uh, he nods he he enters some things really like efficiently with one hand. I remember uh, I remembered Oliver forgot for records. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and like like the entire time he's just he's just looking at you it seems. Um, Maybe you notice that there's uh, there's like a, a slight holographic terminal interface uh, at the same level of the counter as your your face, but like you cannot see the edges. Um, so like it's it's really cleverly set up to where he can look at this thing. He's staring and... at the screen, but he's looking at me at the same time. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly how it is. Uh, it's like it's the ultimate customer service design, and uh, he's like, okay, yes, uh, six tickets going going south uh, line to you said. Where was your destination? Dellen, I believe. Yes, I yes. Dellen is uh, is correct. Um, and uh, I know you're going to bring this up, Akron. He already uh, ordered the uh, separate compartment going west uh, while you guys were in the car just using the compad. Actually, I was going to recommend that Dre actually book um, passage to whatever's past Dellen. The next continent down. And we'll just get off at Dellen and... Uh... So you do you do you approach during this conversation and and, and kind of mutter that uh, to her? When I when I hear her talking or when I hear them asking that, I might uh, tap her on the shoulder and say like, uh, I don't know what the continent name would be, but but why don't we book passage for whatever that is, and then uh, we'll you just jar. get off in Dellen. Ujar is is the next island uh, chain yeah, down the should... line. 
book a passage for you, Jar, but then we'll just get off and go and make it less obvious. How does that sound to uh, to you, Ray? I look at Mr. Green about prices. Um, he glances up to the uh, like the the ticket board sort of like that lists going rates. Well, um, well like, like you know, is it okay with him? Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's that's what that's where he's looking at. Like, there's a ticket board up behind the guy that's basically showing what the rates are. Um, if you guys are getting a compartment to yourself. Would I know that if we t- if we get tickets to Ugar, we can actually get off early, or is the train gonna go right past Dylan? Oh, they stop at they they stop at these stops. Um, it's going to be uh. I have a decision here. If it's too much for him, I recommend that. Oh, it's it's it's, it's not gonna be very it's not gonna be very expensive. Um, I got that. It's just uh, like that Ray is very like anal about prices. It's a hundred credits. Um, you know that he uh, he nods, and uh, all right. So yeah, uh, uh, make that uh, Ugar instead. Background very paranoid We're going that about far being anyway. stuck in a uh, a metal tube that's on a long path in the middle of nowhere in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the concern. Better hope there are no ultra lobster attacks. I don't exactly trust the uh, the train rent the cops to save our ass if things go bad. I'll bring my butter and fork. Do you do you mention anything, uh, Akron, about um, being this guy's bodyguards? Like, do you inquire as as to whether or not weapons are allowed on the transport? I, I'm not going to inquire about that. I'm going to let Ray do that. I'm just going to talk, to, like, say that one thing to Ray and then okay. just keep so, a low uh, profile. What are your security precautions on these trains? Are are they, are they safe? He uh he gives you kind of this dazzling smile uh, and he says uh, yes uh, they are we we take every necessary precaution to ensure that our passengers are completely safe uh, we have a, a dedicated security staff for each each train and uh, they are all there to uh, to make sure everyone is kept safe. What well, about is... uh, oh, personal defense? You check weapons and such. He uh he seem his eyes seem to refocus just ever so slightly, and it looks like maybe for like the first time in in a minute he's actually looking through the screen at you. Um, and he says, uh, limited personal defenses are allowed aboard the uh the train if uh if you are a registered um. He registered security, uh, uh, registered with the security office. Like he, he looks at you like, you know, it, are you registered with the security office? Like he, this is, this is the sort of thing like, you know, are you registered bodyguards? Are you guys, are you guys like members of a, a security force here in the city or something like that? Um, Oliver looks over I... at, at, like to, to you and then Akron, like, do you guys want me to speak up? Sort of like he's giving you that look. Like he he has in the past spoke up on your behalf. Like these are my bodyguards back when the uh, when the police yeah, got in, involved. I don't think we ever registered with anybody though, did we? No. But you know, maybe you could bluff through it or something. Like it it that that's up to you. Like you are technically his bodyguards. Um, I'm generally trying to act as unassociated as possible because I figure being unassociated kind of gives me an advantage if they don't know about me as much. Yeah, yeah. So like, do you do you just stand near them but have your back to them? <laughs> yeah, probably that. In fact, I'll probably be on Google right now looking. Well, the universe is the equivalent of Google. Uh, looking up any uh, crime, uh, major accidents, defects in the there, uh, railway system, anybody that's rep- been murdered, terrorists. There's actions. a report of a. Uh of uh, uh, a horribly violent shootout uh, earlier in the day in one of the, the lower rent districts uh, where a, uh, uh, a group of, uh, of people was killed in, a, uh, in an apartment complex. I definitely would look at that story, but I'd also be looking, uh, I'd probably even bookmark that despite the fact people <laughs> got killed. 
and then push it over and be looking for things that have happened on the train in the last 20 years, looking for security flaws that might well, have been Well, I'm trying to think about what I want to do here, because if we tell them we are registered bodyguards, that marks us out for normal passengers. So I say that uh, we will check our weapons. Uh, how, would, how does that process work? Um... Is Marcus registered with anybody? I know he's like a professional. Uh, I seriously there, doubt that on this planet. Unless Akari says something otherwise. But... Akari, are you a registered bodyguard on this planet? Probably not. Yeah, I didn't think so. Um, like, I, 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 I should say that the guy mentioned, like, are you registered with a security office? But, like, nothing in the way he said things, like, led you to should lead you to believe that you have to have some sort of like permit or something necessarily to be somebody's bodyguard like you could be bodyguards from off world who don't necessarily have permits for this planet like that could be something you try to say um i'm, I'm just i'm saying you you can you can try to check your weapons in here uh if you if you're not specifically giving them a reason why you you need them on the train however uh you're going to be very limited but if you if you try to come across as like oliver's personally employed bodyguards then they may give you some leeway with what you can take aboard here's a question oliver's registered to have weapons here right uh no oh really okay uh oliver is Oliver Green is not registered in any database on this planet. Ah, I see. That's a good point. I didn't think about the fact he's under an alias. Um. So yeah. how how do you how do you do you just try to go ahead and and Akron? If you don't say anything, I'm just gonna say that we're, we're just gonna check our weapons. Okay. I'm probably yeah. gonna be with that. Ray does the, not have persuasion skills. The guy <laughs> nods. Um, and uh, and he says, uh, "You're." Your your personal defenses will be uh, will be taken up at the, uh, the the security station, and he he nods to the uh, you know where the line is going through, uh, and they will be uh, stored very securely with the uh, the rest of the cargo. While this is going on, then I uh, might take a break from my googling to tap Marcus on the shoulder uh, and talk quietly to him. Uh, I'm gonna suggest that once we get on the train. Maybe he uh, he looks like the kind of guy that might know how to make some uh, MacGyver up some weapons and things at hand. We should probably make some. <laughs> Ray's gonna pretend she board. isn't hearing any of this about destroying so, property so as, on the train. You know, like you 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 pay your your credits. Uh, it's 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 a very small amount compared to like the hotel and stuff. This is a mass transit system. Um, and you, you guys get your, your passes. Uh, All right, here's the deal. Ray checks her submachine gun, but leaves the survival kit on her belt, which has a knife in it. But yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see if that goes through the, uh, the, the check. Um, everybody, uh, Ray, Ray hands you your passes. Um, you know, they're, they're small little digital passes that you can kind of carry around and swipe they're like the for various things, they things give on you the... for Disney World. Yeah, they're, 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 they're <laughs> used for various purposes on the train aside wow. from just boarding. Um, and uh, I, I assume you ask him about how to, you know, load luggage from, a con you know, a truck or something. Yeah, like. we, we have quite a bit he, of luggage. Um, what is he, the going rate for luggage, that kind of thing? He nods. Uh, he adds it into your uh, your cost for the transit. Um it's nothing substantial enough that I need to, you guys need to worry about it. I'm keeping track of how much he's actually spending. Um, right, probably still wins at whatever like the price Like a car was. train? It's, take the whole car? Or do we get cars when we get there, too? You guys, no. Um, you, you are offloading the cargo. Uh, like, he tells you guys uh, to just bring the, um, the cargo truck around to a designated area outside. And people will offload the uh, the cargo once you confirm your boarding pass with them, and they will load it onto the train. And uh, at that point, you guys, you know, should probably send your rental vehicles back to the uh, to the dealer or to the, the rental agency. An automated uh, rental car. Well, the the car is automated. Uh, the the Do truck. Do we lose our the security truck is deposit bit... for Akron tampering with them? Uh, no, no, he he did it in such a way that it wasn't. Wasn't totally okay. Um, totally screwed up. Uh, the the truck is is a little bit more primitive and a little bit less used 
or uh, usual. So uh, it's just got a button that gets pressed to flag somebody down to come and take it back to the uh, the dealer or the the rent. So all you have to do is basically just send Park one of them it, back. And then <laughs> so so like you guys you guys unless you're trying to do anything specifically with the vehicle, I assume you unload the the locker that he he mentioned. Um, I assume Akron, you you take your camera. Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, and uh, and you know you 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 instruct the uh, the the people to load it onto this train. Like you hand them your pass, and they they nod. They they tell you that it'll get to the right place. Um, there's actually not too many trains going out of the station. Well, it's just like they're. It's if like, we do that, it'll get to where we booked for, not Dylan. It's going on the same train. Yeah, but if they're a little, a little last, they go in the back. It, it It's going in the cargo compartment. Um, we don't need to talk about logistics. <laughs> no, we don't. Um, I, I do enough of that in real life. Yeah. I, I think I see what you mean, though. I think you meant that it would be hard to get it off at the mid stop, but I think you could probably get them to get it off. You're allowed to get off at whatever stop that you want, basically. Like, well, he's it, implying, like, you know, walk off the train, um, cargo continues on. <laughs> no, but you guys, you guys can get off. Jesus, you guys can get off at whatever stop you want, and you just tell them we're getting off here instead. They can't keep your cargo. Okay. They so cool, they cool. say okay. So even if it's a pain in the ass for them, they have to get your cargo out of the cargo container. I get the the train's gonna be stopped for a while for other people unloading cargo yeah. things. Like you're, yeah. it's not gonna be a, a two minute stop. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. So so like um, you, you get I all also that loaded. call ahead um, about a car to be there for us when we get there. Okay, uh, make it make another rental car. Yeah, that's another uh, fifteen credits. I'll mark that down again. Um, truck again as well. Uh, uh, I give Mr. Green a look. Like we will need the truck as well. He nods. Yes. Um. And uh, and so like every all of that's taken care of, and you guys you guys get into line. Um. I'm assuming I, you're going with your plan about Akron heading up a couple people to uh, to try to set this thing yeah. off. And uh, Marcus, are you going to be the one that tries to bribe this guy, or 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 what? Do I need to bribe him, or can I kind of bluff him into letting it go once it's once the device is down? Um, since you rolled a seven, you succeeded on your check. You know that like. There's no way that somebody actually doing their job is not going to open this this locked container to demand to see what's inside, since they're having to manually search everything, since this thing is going to be down. Um, and you know, like, the only way is basically just to try to bribe this person. Uh, bluffing them would involve, like, somehow convincing them of not opening the container and if you can come up with some sort of reasonable explanation that's fine it's just i i can't think of one uh so i, I didn't include that in your check or anything like what your basic you your basic criminal knowledge is just telling you that you know i i'll get this down to the human level and then i'll bribe this person to get it through okay since it might be applicable to what we're doing, I'm just curious while I'm in line if I uh, did run across any stories of any major terrorist actions or crime committed on the railways. And uh, if I did, I might have just taken a glance to see how they got caught or how they got away with it. Uh, you basically come up with, with very little in the way of any sort of criminal search results for the, the mag trains. Like anything that comes across is like, you know, somebody was assaulted uh, in a compartment uh like by fisticuffs, like somebody got into an argument or something, and they had to be escorted off the train. Um, awesome, like, awesome. No, know, like, definitely nothing. No, nothing notable. Okay, good. I want to make sure if there were any security flaws in all, the railway. It seems it seems all of the recent violence in or around the city has has been linked to something you guys have done, or can be attributed <laughs> to general gang violence. Mm -hmm, wonderful. Attributed to Akron being in town with his luck. Yeah. So, um, question: As a as a knowledge of criminal league things, would I know how much he would need to bribe? What the what the what the accepted amount for that type of thing is? 
Um, because I don't have very can, much money on me personally. Um, so if I don't have know, enough, I would probably go say, "Hey, hey, Oliver, you wanna you wanna spot your buddy a, a few <laughs> credits to get your stuff through security?" Yeah. Um, you know, you 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 say that to him, and he he nods. He he slips you a a, a credit chip. Like when you say spot him a few few credits like you know he assumes you're, you're you're only talking about a couple hundred which is what you are talking about you know that if you try to lowball this guy he's going to be insulted and you might yeah be arrested uh, or at the very least kicked out if you over bribe this guy he might actually get worried and be like what what is in this thing um obviously you know, full of ultra lobster marcus takes yeah. very seriously yeah, you know that like a couple hundred credits is is definitely worth it for this guy, uh, and he will just think it's some sort of normal contraband. He doesn't think it's like a bomb or something. All right, that'll work. All right, so um, am I tripping the alarm? By the way, uh, that's kind of you're you're a tech guy. Think of something. Yeah, like. The way I was envisioning it, and I guess um, Marcus kind of explained a little bit to you, is like there's maybe you can uh, you can set off some sort of uh, frequency with your compad. Give him my shotgun, and that'll trigger it real nicely when it goes through well, the scanner. It's it's not triggering the scanner; it's disabling the scanner. Um, maybe there's some sort of uh, uh, of something you can emit with your with your compad that will basically just fritz it out. And uh, right. force them to uh, to do this. Um, would you like to make a uh, let's see here make a roll for this? Um, I think this is probably a tech post tech roll. Which and would just, be? Let me see here. Uh, that's a zero on your sheet. So it's trained, um, and this would definitely be an int thing unless you're trying to argue it some other way. But no matter what, you're still getting a plus one. Um, it's a strength thing. <laughs> <Not because. laughs> uh, well, Overpower I mean, like, the feasibly, uh, if you want to turn this on me and say like you're not doing a post tech, you're actually trying to to like to sneak uh, and actually physically disable this thing, like accidentally bump into it and and break it somehow. Um, if, if that's how you want to approach it, you're perfectly willing, you know, capable of I doing that. I think five tech's fine. I think okay. five tech seems pretty fitting. Um, yeah, and it's perfectly fine for you to basically just be waiting in line with your compad, like, looking bored as shit, and then, like, you know, you're like, oh, fine, I'll walk through this security device, and you walk through it with your compad, like, that's, that's no big deal. Like, you're not supposed to divest your, your self of things when you walk through these scanners it's like it just scans you and then if they detect anything you're not supposed to have they will tell you to to remove them um so you get up to the line um and you're you're coming up on the uh on the security scanner i, I it seems think i to know, be... have an idea i'll use something to make it so i can't be scanned which will look completely obvious uh make it so look you know the scan like reflects back and just i can't be scanned that should be oh, okay. enough to be uh yeah, them yeah. Out enough to pull that me sounds to the like side. they're gonna have to be like, "Whoa, the scanner is not working. That's that's not good. We're gonna have to like and like they try to reboot it or something, and and then they're gonna have to go in like manual mode." Yeah, that's that's perfectly good. Um, there's two guys there. One guy actually operating it, and one guy standing by with a weapon. They both have uh, have well, one guy the guy operating it has a stun baton. Uh, the guy behind him actually has a pistol. Uh, and he's not really paying too much attention. He's just kind of scanning the area, looking a little bit bored. Um, uh, I will make your roll, unless uh, unless roll twenty is back. I think it's working again. It was working last time. Look, I haven't looked again. All right. Well, let's see. Let's let's have you try to make the roll. And uh, nice roll. Oh, yeah, yes. it works. Very nice. Yeah, you succeed. Um, so you step in here and you you maybe you you suppress a slight grin as you press this button and like. A slight high-pitched frequency, just just slightly enough for you to hear, but nobody else emits. And the thing goes off, and they're like, "Wait, what?" And and they can't scan you. And the guy says, "The guy steps forward. It's a human guy. He holds out his hand and says, uh, uh, sir, can you can you step back for a second?'" 
I'm going to start complaining about minimum wage morons <laughs> <laughs> to draw as much attention as possible away he from everyone He scowls else. at you and he says, sir, step back, please, from the machine. And this well, is the part where Akron gets tasered. Yeah, so he fiddles with a few things and he motions you through. Uh, it doesn't scan you again. He, he looks at his friend and he says, Did, it, it's not scanning him. And, and like he looks like he doesn't really know what to do. Like maybe the other guy has more experience. The other guy sighs, he like rolls his eyes, and he comes over. He starts pressing some buttons, and he can't get it to work either. He's like, "Oh crap!" Uh, he he picks up a, a communication device, and he like he speaks into it. You can basically hear him notifying his superior that there's a problem with the security things, and uh, his his superior tells him something. He turns to uh, he turns to the the, the kind of noobish guy who uh, who scowled at you, and he says, "We're gonna have to do it manually until they get a tech to come out and look at it." I says, oh, damn it. Uh, so, yeah, they 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 kind of pat you down. Um, I'm going to be as obnoxiously uh, snubby and insulting as possible to get pretty much the entire security team kind of annoyed with me, hopefully keeping their eyes on me while uh, okay. other yeah. people do their business. Uh, eventually, they, they let you through. You have not made friends with these two guys, but they let you through. Like, you, you sneer at them as you leave and... Like, do you just walk through and, and wait uh, down by the concourse where where everybody else is, is eventually going to show up? Yeah, that that's the plan. I'll probably okay. be uh, muttering to myself about them on the way as I uh, All right, so out. every unless, – unless you guys are doing this differently, everybody else is kind of in line as a group. Yep. Um, Marcus has the big container uh, on the conveyor belt thing next to him, and um, – uh, there's there's only two people ahead of you. Uh, both of them have to get their their bags checked. Like you see, one of them actually gets opened up and searched. Um, and the guy the guy has to apologize to the woman. He's like, I'm sorry, we we have to do this. The machines are down. Uh, it comes to you, Marcus. And by now, the the guy with the gun, like the senior guy, is has gone back to his bored ass post and he's looking around. And that there's this kind of the guy who you assume is somewhat new at this. Um, He's he's waiting for you. Uh, how do you how do you wish to proceed? Uh, just kind of I don't want to say anything. I want to just kind of let it go through like normal until he wants to try and open up that crate. Yeah, he, he wants to try to open it. He tries to open it and it's it's super security locked. He says, right, uh, yeah. "Sir, you're gonna have to open this for me." Uh, and he he kind of he lets you walk over. Like he he steps back a second to. Or, or a foot to let you walk near it, presumably to open it, so you can kind of get close to him. Okay, I want to kind of go over to him and and sort of look around a second, look up at his buddy who's not paying that much attention, and, and kind of say, uh, "Well, this this case is full of samples of uh, of jar and flu. I'm, I'm sure you don't want to get anywhere close to that. Trust me, you don't." He, uh, his eyes widen a little bit as you describe this, and he looks down at it distastefully. At least not unless you want to, you know, inflate like a water balloon. He's like, sir, uh, he's like looking around. It looks like he might be about to turn to get his, his you know, the more superior kind of experienced guy. Uh, you have a moment here to, to do something. And I, I want to, like, put my hand on his shoulder and kind of slip him this, this credit chip thing that uh, that Green gave me earlier. Yeah, and, yeah. and Mr. Credit Chip here agrees that you probably don't want to open this container, sir. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he his his expression changes as, like, he, he palms the credit chip and he, like, he holds it. Uh, he doesn't directly look at it. And he suddenly realizes what's going on. And he, he looks around, like, kind of unobtrusively, um, and uh, let's see here. Make make a, uh, a persuade roll. Um, it's going to be 2d6. Uh, you're untrained in that. Um, so it's going to be at a minus one. An outright failure here is not going to be an outright failure. I'm basically just going to be judging his reaction to this. Okay. 
Oh, outright success. Uh, yeah, he uh, he doesn't even check to see like how he, you can see like he's thinking about like checking how much credits are on this. Uh, but he looks down at it at the uh, at the case and looks at you like you're pretty well off. Like you've you've got like some like a bulletproof vest underneath your your coat. Like he he assumes you have some money to throw around. Yeah. Um, and he he just he palms it and he says okay yeah and he he pretends to fiddle with it for a second and then I'll he, he I'll give him another like pat on the shoulder thank you sir you you have a nice day yeah uh, he does he does ask you to uh, to check your weapons however oh. he he, Fine. he he looks at your at your your rifle and your pistol and then he kind of looks over his shoulder at his superior and he's like I'm gonna have to ask you to to check those sir like. He gives you a look like, I'm sorry, buddy, like, I can get that thing through, but I, I can't get those. <laughs> yeah, all right, fine. Okay. Um, you just you just uh, gave this guy, uh, like, 200 credits. You made his day. And you check your weapons in. And Marcus, uh, Marcus, you are, you are let through... Um, you are given a uh, like a trolley to kind of take this uh, this container with you. Oliver comes in directly behind you. He hands over his mag pistol. Uh, he pulls out like a, a monoblade knife. Hands that Ooh, over. Ooh, would I would I have checked that as well? Is that one of those? Um, I think you were allowed to keep your knife. Okay. Um. And. Uh, and like he actually pulls out a grenade and, and slips it in there too. <laughs> and he looks he looks a little bit bashful at that. But yeah, like the guy the guy stares at it for a few seconds and then he puts it in with the rest of it. And and the guy's like, Holy shit. And and, and he lets Oliver through. Um We're just gonna assume everybody else goes the same way unless somebody's trying to, to bribe something or sneak something through. Is anybody trying to do that? I will try to stealth my salt off. Okay. okay. How are you? How are you trying to do this? I would imagine I'm going to try to hide it underneath my jacket. I thought you were gonna try some Jedi mind tricks. I don't have uh, that yeah, power. Yeah, he. <laughs> um, <laughs> that power takes like level six in the psionic or the telepath one. All right, you're gonna have to describe to me how you're hiding this in your jacket before I'm even gonna let you make a stealth roll. Uh. Because he's, you've seen him basically pat people down if they've got jackets and stuff. Yeah, I guess it's not gonna work out. It's won't bother. I kind of figured it might because it's a sold off, but I guess it's not. It's pretty big. Can you big. disassemble it? Not it's here. Not that kind. Yeah, it's a yeah, I, I, so no. In my mind, I know something that would immediately work in this situation that you could do, but I, I I'm kicking myself because I can't say it. Um, I don't so know yeah, anything you just... that would work because it would, it would, if anything that would hold it, it would be the backpack, and that's the first thing they're gonna search. So unless I can maybe hide it in the bottom of the bag, underneath something else. Uh, let's yeah, you can make a stealth check for that. Um, like wrap is it you up past inside your... of my synthetic rope, twenty meters. Yeah, yeah, make a uh, make a stealth check. That's uh. That's trained for you. Nice. Yeah, trained, um, but... And this this is going to be an int check, like to see how intelligently you you could hide this. So it's going to be at a plus one. Uh, this is going to be a fairly difficult check, but you know you could get nope. it. Yeah. So he uh, he doesn't notice it at first, but he you know maybe his hand bumps it as he's going to zip the bag back up, and uh, he he kind of looks at you, and then he like looks at like the rest of the people who pass. He's like, Jesus, how many people have like he he doesn't say I, anything, I know, but you can tell he's like he's noticed like the amount of weaponry that has just passed through his station. I know, man. Have you seen the news today? That there was that that there, there was that shooting up in like Bailton, right? So like you can't blame a guy for wanting to be a little bit more prepared, right? He nods and uh, he looks like he's gonna you know he 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 puts the the shotgun in with the check and then he kind of he looks at you, he kind of pales and he just he he lets you through. Probably going to be shooting a dirty look to Twix right now, revealing that, uh, making a comment about something we were involved with. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> a you... a quick little dirty look. 
you all managed to get through there. Um, one of you has a monoblade knife. And uh, you also have this as of yet unidentified container that uh, that Oliver has brought aboard. Um, you uh, you make your way down the uh, the concourse. Let me see if I can actually switch scenes now. Whenever we get to the actual compartment, I'm gonna give the shotgun to Marcus because he's probably more accurate with it than I am. Yeah, so this is this is just kind of a basic basic image of. Uh, of the city and the uh, the mag train at the bottom, um, it's a double decker train. There's like a you know a floor up top and a floor up down bottom, um, and there's you know there's a compartment uh, on either side of uh, of these aisles that run down them. So you guys have a compartment all to your own. Yours is actually somewhat towards the front up top, like you're uh, you're in like car three uh, on the the upper deck. Car three on the upper deck. Okay. Yep. Um. And uh, you know, you're you're you're, you know, you follow the rest of the crowds and stuff, and somebody, somebody shows you or, or points the way. Like, you know, you you get in into the train, and uh, there's like little panels on the wall that kind of like once you you slide your your boarding pass on them, they light up. And like a, a, a bright semi holographic line just guides you through the train. Um and uh yeah, all of you are guided to uh to your car. Uh as you're as you're entering you you can see some familiar luggage being loaded into the cargo down down below the uh you know, on, on the underside of the back side of the train. Looks like your stuff is getting loaded. Um yeah, so you guys get to your, your compartment. Uh, this is a very, a very nice train. Uh, it, it's very like it's. This is in constant use, but it is kept in in good condition. Just because I'm paranoid, I'll I'll do a full bug sweep on the uh, car we have. Yeah. Um. You know, you're. I'm not even gonna make you roll for this. Um. Your your bug sweeping device does pick up some audio listening devices. Uh. But when you inspect them, it appears to be like some sort of audio interface with the computer system. Um, I'm not sure how you're going to, to treat that and how you're going to react to that. They technically listen in uh, to the car um, for audio commands. I'm going to recommend we stuff a sock over the uh, both of them. So at least muffle everything to the point where it won't be very usable without actually damaging the train and getting attention. So Akron... Uh, unzips his bag and pulls out some used socks. Uh, everybody, everybody sees this and takes notes of it. I, I assume. Um, Fringe it is used socks that are star shade of yellow. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys. Ray just, roll, right, just rolls her head at Akron's antics. You guys yeah, have give seen. Me the you guys have seen um, like the occasional security person on this train uh they are dressed in a gold sort of jumpsuit almost um like the guys the guys in the actual station uh had regular suits on uh these guys it's like a, a black and gold um you know one piece kind of jumpsuit sort of thing that it's it's obvious that it's supposed to make them stand out enough to where you can pick them pick them out what are they armed with um they all seem to have uh like stun weaponry. Like you don't see anything that uh yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, you don't seem to see anything that's like o like an overt like lethal weapon on them. If that's the case, I'm gonna be taking a special note of looking for any of them with a lethal weapon, just in case somebody got okay. on the train. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll let you know if uh, if if there's ever a, a part where you might see some sort of lethal weapon, I'll let you roll a perception check. Cool, thanks, man. Um, I'll let Oliver have the window seat. Alright, yeah. Yeah, you guys describe to me how you're, you're getting in here. Like, the Carthen has been very quiet as of as he always is. Oliver's kind of laid back. He he plops down on one of the, the couches. Um, this is a, a fairly sizable compartment, uh, which I think I can actually draw for you now. Is there um, anything in here that uh, could theoretically be used or fashioned into a makeshift weapon? 
I just stare at Akron. Oh, it's worth noting that your your packet loss is gone now, Star. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very, very thankful for that. Akron, must you destroy or tamper with everything we set foot in? Uh, you're gonna have to Given refine. Given my track record, I probably should be. You're gonna have to refine your search a little bit about what can be used as a weapon. Like um, brass bars that might be able to be pulled off. The yeah, wall, there are uh, there are acceleration. Table legs that could be sharpened. There are know. acceleration bars uh, on on the walls and stuff, and in by the seats. This thing gets up to uh, like bullet train speeds or higher. Um, uh, on on long stretches, so like, you know, there are inertial dampeners for this thing, but you still you still have these things just in case. Uh, feasibly, you could turn one of these things into a weapon or like a safety harness into some sort of garrote. My thinking is that. Um... Sorry about that. My my headphones went wonky. No, uh, my thinking is that uh, anybody that doesn't have a weapon should probably have even a makeshift. A club is better than nothing if they have more uh, people with guns showing up, especially in close quarters like this where you might actually stand a chance. So, so you don't you you not only take note, you actually start like trying to fashion weapons. I'll probably be trying to see if I can convince Marcus to help me in this endeavor. He just has that. Uh... Just as a as a point of. Uh game knowledge. I'm looking at the table right now. An unarmed attack is 1d2 damage. A club is 1d4 damage. So, yeah. Just how how worth it is it to you to to go through the effort of getting stuff versus just, you know, punching somebody out. Well, I will tell you that um basic NPCs have somewhere around 4 uh hit points. Like it, it can vary a little bit. So you would know that you could feasibly one shot somebody with a club, whereas it, it's going to take more than one with a with a fist. Like there there is a reason for it that he he might okay. go for a club. Figure anything's better than nothing because somebody point, comes through a door. I unwrap that shotgun and give it to Marcus. I give him a couple slugs, and not shells. That be, that you I don't have your him. shotgun. Oh, I thought I talked to him. That's why I was. No, you you it, it got checked. Remember. Oh, I thought you even said he might put it back in the bag. That's why I was trying to persuade him. No, no, right at the end of the bag. No, you, 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 didn't, you didn't persuade. That's why I was talking to him about the thing. You kind of it said was, he put uh, it was a thing, I believe. I thought you meant all I didn't have I, to roll because he put it back in the bag. All I heard, uh, no, he put it in, in with the checked items. Uh, when you were talking, I heard, uh, like, a nervous person explaining why they had a weapon to begin with. Uh, there were... <laughs> Not, not like. That's what I thought. And, and like, that, that, that was, that was how I was treating that situation. Like, it did not, it did not sound like any sort of persuade role to me. Well, I guess so. Maybe the way I saw it was the way I heard it was I failed in the stealth. Then I, I said that, and then it sounded like to me like you said he put it back in the bag. Which is why I didn't no. bother going any further with Persuade, because I thought it was so successful. No, no, I, I said it got put in with the with the rest of the checked weapons. Um, and uh, oh, that was definitely that. not I, enough. I, I remember that was definitely not enough for he Persuade. He put it back with the rest. I assumed he put it back in the bag and left it there. Uh, if you're if you're really adamant about it, you can you can make a Persuade roll. It will be really really high. What's the matter? I'll roll it, but it doesn't really matter. If I fail, it just takes it anyways. A plus one. Nine. It's not high enough. Uh, very close. Um, I was, I was, that's really on the borderline. Um, if you can give me, like, something actually that would have persuaded him, like, your reasoning and your logic, uh, I might give it to you. Like it's, I I was about, looking for a about, ten. About literally but... pointing out that we're protecting Oliver Green. It, there's nothing that I can give him, so it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely not uh, not going to accept the city is dangerous is is an excuse. All right, so um, 
I am just about to, to draw this out. Um, you know, the train is getting ready to leave in the next few minutes. Um, does any, anybody have anything they want to say or do or anything? Lay is just, just uh, relaxing on the couch. Uh, I'm sure Akron has some security precautions he wants to take. Uh, is there a mini bar in the car? Oh, yes. Gotta okay, set up yeah, I know where I'm going to be parked. Got to set the camera up outside the door, the remaining camera. I'll probably complain to everybody for not bringing the other camera. And then, uh, <laughs> and then after that, I'll um, probably continue trying to find anything that could be used as a weapon or as some sort of a uh, anything that might be sharpened. Later, I'll probably will go to the dinner car and see if I can find a steak knife or something. Max is going to poke That's you. That's actually probably the better thing to Open do a compartment and hand you a camera. Oh, that's awesome! What happens? Max got one of the cameras now. We're leaving. Oh, well, so you have both of them then. Oh, that's awesome! I'm gonna really look at that, and I'm gonna really kind of, uh, be very intrigued about the intelligence of Max now. I'm gonna ask, uh, how he knew how to do that. That's, uh -oh. that's kind of impressive. That, that may not have been the wisest move, Twitch, oh. <laughs> oh, I know it wasn't, but it makes an interesting conversation. I yeah, don't know it wasn't. As a pers as a person, I know it wasn't. Twitch doesn't. So I, I guess Twitch just I knows guess, that he's helping us out with his mission. I guess there's this conversation. Cameras. There's this conversation going on about the bot, and uh, Oliver kind of you know quirks and eyebrows like I've I've worked with a lot of, uh, of drones uh, in my time in the uh, in the Marines. Uh, I haven't seen one quite like that. I've had him for several years now. It's a bit of a long story, but he seemed to have some time. Nope, you called him a him. I'm going to ask um, if he's remote controlled, or how does he operate exactly? He's got some software packages. I, 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 <laughs> he is probably not the correct term. I've always seen him that way. I, I call him Max. I'm actually going to nod about that. I'm going to actually hand, I'm going to, uh, I think I have an idea. I'm going to have like kind of a, a look flash and then I'm going to say, uh, I think Max is going to help out with security. I'm going to see if I can attach one of the little cameras to the front of him. There's no need. He already has one. Already has one, does he? He's an, well, astro one that, he's an astro survey droid. One that he can look through. Oh. Yeah, I was, I was thinking of one that you could transfer to the data pad, give us a remote camera that's actually mobile, whatever Max sees, we can see well, for uh, the moment. he brings up a good point. You don't necessarily have to attach a camera to him. Like, maybe you could hack his signal and, and maybe, like, link him to a wireless network and, and put him, like, so that his, his feed actually outputs to your, your comm pad. Is, is that something that you might try? Uh, rather than hack it, I'm going to see if... Uh... Twitch would be able to just give me that access so like we could use his camera, then we can set the other spare camera up uh, a little further down the hall. Yeah, I can do that. I have the code. Awesome! Uh, yeah, I think my character is definitely going to be like pulling out my comm pad and uh, or data slab and passing it over to you and having you uh, see if you can connect them in for me, though. Okay, I'll give him the access code. Cameras. Cool! Uh, I have the access code. I'm definitely going to plug that in. Then I'm going to hook the other camera up, uh, see if I can hook it down further down the hall, like if there's any corners or uh, wherever the, the doorway connecting would be. I'm going to try and see if I can unobtrusively put it down somewhere around there. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to come back. I'm definitely going to ask um, where Mac was developed also. Uh, he once belonged to the Tankai Corporation. You say it's a survey droid? Astro survey droid, yes. Series 7 you... model. I think they got the 10s or 11s out now, though, last I heard. How did you repurpose him? Is he mostly operational on verbal commands? Yep. He mostly works off verbal commands. Every now and then I had to type something to him, but he responds pretty well. I've had him for several he years. Like he, this, he's almost he, like a uh... dog to me. Did he uh, advance this way over time, or did he, uh, or was he always like this from the time you uh, obtained him? Oh, he's always been this way to me. Al, uh, do you know if he was around long before you had him, or? 
Uh, I used to see him around the office sometimes. Uh, my father worked on him somewhat. I haven't seen him for years. I was going to comment that it's quite unique and that uh, you should probably back his software up at the uh, in case something ever happened to him, like an EMP pulse or something that might fry his software. Because I think that would be the hardest thing to replace more than the mechanics after taking a look at it. Quite true. I already back him up once a week. Oh, you do? Do a completely full backup? Yeah, it's on my data slab. Uh, Akron, you do notice that uh, one of one of his legs is is broken off at the uh, at the upper side, like one of his four legs. I'll probably tap it and ask uh, what happened there. Uh, that that's my fault. Uh, I will admit. Uh, I tried to maintain it myself one day, and uh, I accidentally knocked something over and broke it. I, I intend to get him some new ones, but I haven't had the time. Or, or I hope to spend some of the money from this mission to get him a new one. Does it look like something I could rig some sort of little, uh, I guess like a peg leg or something to for the moment? You to could totally, to you could totally try that. Yeah, totally. Would that be a Poztec roll, or what would that be to yeah. try to rig a little? Uh, yeah, that'd leg be a Poztec, Poztec roll. Like, what, what are you trying to give him a peg leg made out of, like? He's, he's the, pretty uh... small. Uh, you've got, you know, you've got a spare uh, stylus for your compad in your bag. That'd be perfect. I'll totally try to rig him a little leg out of the spare stylus. And uh... you know, it, it, it occurs to you that if you if you if you did it in such a way that he could actually interact with compads now using that as a stylus, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually an interesting thought. No, this is, uh, you can tell that uh, Akron's very, very interested in uh, in Max. In fact, uh, he's the first time he's really looked at him like that since he, he thought he was like a remote-controlled uh, probe before. But uh, yeah, he's going to definitely try to rig it. Should I roll Poztech to try to reel that, or what should I roll to uh, try to jury-rig him a little peg leg for the moment? Uh, yeah, yeah, Poztech. That would be a, uh, a plus one, I think. Let me see what my stats are on that. Yeah, plus one from intelligence, right? Uh, or would it be a different uh, stat? Um, it would be dex in this case. This, this might be dex. I guess it's a plus one either way, so let me roll it here. Yeah, yeah, you... you... Stylus the shit out of that thing's leg. Um, I'll hope that uh, I'll, I'll definitely uh, like you. You, that you managed to actually you managed to actually fit it to the correct length to where where like it's it's a, a slight bit shorter than the normal leg would be, but that's that's probably ideal because since it can't bend like this way, it's not interfering with its actual movement. Um, and yeah, yeah, like this. This is a pretty pretty good thing. Like, how how do you respond to to Akron doing this to uh to your friend here, Twitch? I I would be probably hovering over nearby, just making sure nothing else goes absolutely wrong with it. But I still intend to get a proper leg for him eventually. Yeah. Hopefully this um, holds him through. In fact, Akron's probably gonna act friendlier towards Max than he's acted towards most of the people so far. <laughs> All right. Uh, is anybody else doing anything? Like the train is starting to uh, to get ready. Like you you hear like a. I apologize train... to Mr. Green for all the unfortunate occurrences so far, and uh, the unfortunate expenses of it that are ne that were necessary. He nods like it. He, he realizes it was unfortunate, and then it, but it but it wasn't really. It was unavoidable. The train will be leaving in five minutes. Oh, we haven't actually left yet. Oh, we were on the way. Um, nope. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, it, it's 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 getting ready to go, and, and watch uh, out the window. And after a little while, uh, it it starts to go on. Like you, you hear this uh, this kind of thrumming for a few seconds before it kind of drowns out. Um, and uh, the whole train kind of picks up on a on a magnetic cushion. Um, you can't see it from where you are, but basically there's these these clamps on either side of the train that kind of hover around the sides of the rails um, beneath each car, and uh, 
and they're very close to the rails but like yeah that's that's how it stays locked and it's it's actually a, an incredibly sturdy stable ride um and it's it's fairly slow as it's leaving the city uh but uh but you know this is still this is still early it's like maybe i'd say that prob that whole sequence maybe took you like an hour hour 20 minutes so it's it's only like it's it's not even quite 10 o'clock yet and uh, you know the sun's finally like really shining outside uh and uh, you you can kind of see the glittering blue of of the centron ocean out there and uh, it starts to pick up a little bit of speed as it as it exits uh, town proper define a little bit of speed um now i need to see how fast a bullet train goes 200 miles an hour um yeah so uh it's it's not going max speed but uh it's it's already going like 80 80 or 90 like just kind of peeling out of town it, this is a very you know very streamlined fast transportation yeah no friction nope. um and yeah you can it, it's kind of odd because you can hardly hear the wind or anything outside it seems like there's they probably have some sort of force field around the front of the train, similar to what you had on your balconies at the uh, the Prel. Um, Oliver, uh, you know, he he leans back. He uh, he he just kind of watches out the window, kind of stretches himself. Uh, Twitch, you you probably notice that um, that Phyrexis is a little uncomfortable like he's always a little bit uncomfortable but like he's he's not used to this situation at all he's sitting directly across from you i think i'll sit beside him and try to comfort him a little not used to the speed uh he uh he looks around uh you probably get the feeling that he's uncomfortable for more than one reason but he says uh, i've i've never been in one of these I can't say I have either, but it seems to be a rather fast and efficient way to travel. Besides, I'll lean back on the couch. We get to relax the whole way. More or less. He nods. Uh, the rest of the group, you're probably picking up that um, Phyrexis almost only talks with uh, with Twitch, and he seems to be somewhat deferential to him. Uh, when's lunch? Well, I guess we know when lunch is, obviously. But uh, how does lunch work on one of these? Uh, well, there is a there is a dining compartment um, at the rear uh, section or rearward to your section. Um, there's there's several dining areas uh, of, across the the train. Uh, it should be worth noting that like while this is a very commonly used thing um and it's a very long train people are not packed in here really tightly uh so in your car um section there's you know there's probably like uh it's probably like eight actual resident or you know compartments that people travel in um and those can hold you know roughly 6 to 8 people um and then uh at the back of every car there is kind of a common area also do we still have uh all of the insta burgers that Ackham picked oh up? yeah yeah he's got those i was gonna say that uh if i wasn't looking to go to the dining area to see what kind of knives they had i probably would uh have just stayed and snacked they don't have my knives they have plastic sporks I figured that might be the case. If that is the case, I'm probably just gonna. Uh, Ray come will back take and... uh, take people's orders and go to the dining lounge for takeout. Quote quote. I recommend we go in shifts. Not everybody leave at once if we're going to the dining area or leaving the part compartment oh, for I any reason. I thought I was the only one. Right. If you, someone's already left, that's I'll the say. direction of. Yep. Oh no, Ray can totally go. Uh... So yeah, um, if if you want to go back and get some sort of like early brunch or something you, you certainly oh, it's still, can. still at early it's, 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 it's like 10 o'clock so. okay okay um 
and you can always call people to your to your car like that was what those yeah, audio like sensors car. were for um yeah like you, you there's kind of like an automated service perhaps for that Computer, where you just go bring back. us champagne yes yes you could you could potentially do that like maybe a little what are those things um uh, a, a pneumatic tube pops open and like a, a champagne bottle flies out. I don't know. Um, Akron's going to say that he's had enough of room service after our last uh, experience. <laughs> uh, Oliver, Oliver kind of I don't know. The, the last room laughs. service itself was rather good. It's just what occurred after that wasn't so fun. Yeah, Kari, you seem to like that Ultra Lobster. Um... There's uh, there's several forms of entertainment in this car, uh, like there's uh, there's several holographic displays. There's also some, like these aren't full holographic tables. Um, these are like 2.5D basically. Uh, you look at them and they they have holographic depth to them, um, and they can be interactive and stuff like that. But uh, the only real holog like full holographic thing in here is. Uh, in the table set in between both rows of benches, there is like what you notice is a small emitter in there. Do uh, they have that, holographic chess? Yeah, you could probably do that. <laughs> um, so uh, you could bring up, holographic chess with somebody. You could you could do that. You could bring up the news. You could browse the net, stuff like that. Uh, you could probably do some online purchasing if you so desired. Uh, Play some holographic poker with. Uh... With green, maybe. Yeah, he'll 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 be down for that. Hollow um, poker. I think yeah, Akron's gonna look for yeah. uh, look for some news clips on the holographic TV of anything how, about how related to the work? shooting. They give you holographic cards, but you have to be able to, they would have to display on something different on both sides holographically. Oh, it's fine. Um, Holograms, the way, man. The way things work in this is the they future. project slight force fields. Uh, you can with enough force you can poke through them, but like you basically if you're holding a card. Uh, you know, you're holding like a small force field. You can't take it away from the table too far, but yeah, you can you can actually hold it. That's kind of cool. That is pretty cool. Actually, that's I how like that. that's how all interactive holograms work in this universe. Uh, is like anything with a holographic interface uh, for controls, they project some sort of force field that you interact with, uh, and the holographic display is kind of projected onto that. Um. So yeah, so you guys, some somebody's playing uh, somebody's playing holographic chess uh, with, I think it was Twitch, right? Uh, me, Ray. Oh, Ray. Uh, I is is anybody actually playing? Or are you playing against the uh, the computer? Yeah, if no one else is playing with me, I'm playing against the computer. And uh, it sounds like Akron's browsing through the net um, and uh, in the in the news and stuff. And uh, Marcus and Oliver are uh, in in a uh, in a game of hollow poker, and it looks like they're both veterans of this. And like you know, it, it's just it's watching two casual veterans play. Are they playing holographic. against each other? Oh yeah. Is there any news on the uh, or any news that we didn't know about the shooting popping up on the search? If there isn't, I'll probably turn it off and. Uh... Play well, a game if, of holographic chess myself. if you do a if you do a search, um, you basically find news feeds for that kind of subject, and you do a search for the incident at the 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 apartment. Yeah, for anything in that, I probably search more generalized like uh, crime, and then like you know the like the rough region we were in, and then collect links about the shooting. Nothing search too specific in case somebody's. Uh... Looking for that, but uh, then yeah, I want to try to pull up any news stories, see uh, yeah, any information. General on uh, general crime in the city, like uh, the biggest thing that pops up is like this ongoing investigation into the the assassination or at least uh, the suspected assassination of the Lesuvian ambassador, uh, Kavar Olaxi. Uh, it was originally like he was just found dead, but people are speculating that he was assassinated. Um, even though there's like no public evidence for that, uh, that's like front page, and it's it's been like on all the news channels for several days. Uh, you uh, you get some notice, like you know, in your search, very briefly, 
Um, like you, you kind of have to find it and then hold on to it before it goes away about, uh, about the shootout at the, uh, or not necessarily the shootout, the drive by at the, the apartment. Um, I think I there's... bookmarked that earlier, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah you did. Take a look at that you, you can, you can definitely awesome. bring that up. Um, it's, there's not a whole lot of reporting onto it. Sounds like that sort of thing happens occasionally in that sector of town. Um, uh, the, the report indicates that, uh, two, uh, it, it seems to assume at least that two, uh, drug, uh, organizations kind of went to some sort of war in the street there. Um, because, uh, the, the apartment below Twitch's, uh, apparently, uh, they, they list the occupants as three, um, kind of, you know, low, low rent, low life thugs, uh, and uh, they had some sort of drug operation going on down there. Uh, and the it, it appears to you that the police and the reporters at least are assuming that it was related to that. Um, you know, whether that's the case or not, that's up to you. Uh, and they, they basically have no information on who did the shooting. Um, cameras in that section of the city uh, did not catch any clear... Uh, views of the uh, the perpetrators and the car was found abandoned i'll probably try to uh tell twitch you shouldn't have to worry the people that got ice instead of us were uh not worth worrying about <laughs> maybe it speaks to uh to the, the actual place that the twitch has to uh, to live <laughs> that, that he's living yeah, in the drug dealers yeah, that's pretty bad um uh, also, also on the news, you you catch a notice of like something going on with the bank of Centron. Like it seems like they've had like a lot of security breaches in the last few days, but it seems like uh, the the security forces writing it off to pranks, perhaps, or like just hackers trying to make a statement. And then there's there's this sort of story ongoing about this this shootout inside the Prell Hotel, um, where uh, where several people were killed. Um, and, uh, and it, it seemed like the security force was, uh, was engaged with, uh, with un, un, unknown criminal assailants in, inside the, uh, the, the tower, uh, from the report that you see in the images and stuff, you see the image of the Verin guy, like holding up his palm to get away from the camera. Um, it doesn't seem like they're reporting very accurately on it. Like it seems like the Prell has been really high on security and not letting the the media inside. So like they don't really have too much in the way of actual accurate information. Uh, the media seems to be assuming that there was some sort of sh like large shootout inside and and that the security forces were actually involved somehow, and that multiple people were left dead. Yeah, interesting. Only, only that one guy actually died, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, That's very uh, interesting. It's it's mentioned that uh, some perpetrators uh, were managed uh, were were reported to have escaped uh, through uh, an upper exit to the tower uh, to one of the uh, the skyways. Is there any um, sketches of them? If there is, I'll probably try and download those just for. Uh... There's there's like grainy security footage of uh, of two people running out of one of these upper exits to the tower and uh, and hopping into a ground car, which looks s surprisingly similar, at least in make and in, in model and color to the one that was used outside of uh, outside of the apartment. Oh, that's and, and, and which was later found abandoned. Yeah, that's what they'd be showing everybody uh, sharing all this with the class, of course. <laughs> everybody will be uh, filled in on all of these uh developments um marcus would you like to make a gambling roll to see how uh how well you you play poker <laughs> all right um i'll totally play a game of uh chess against ray once i'm done with the news searches what do you think uh sort of the skill that gambling would entail like if you were trying to cheat dex would certainly come into play uh, but just playing it is probably either int or wisdom. Well, are you talking I'm actually about trained in gambling. What? I'm actually trained in gambling. What about yeah, that? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I I, I, was I, rem thinking about I, re that. I remembered that. That's, that's why I'm bringing this <laughs> I, up. I didn't. So I, I was thinking, uh, are you talking uh, poker, right? Yeah. 
Charisma might be a good check then, because it's all about bluffing and crap. Unless I, I, it basically comes down to unless you're specifically trying to cheat somehow, it's going to be a zero. Yeah, I'm. I'm not going to. He's my employer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, it's it's just a two d six, um, and I'm gonna actually just roll this opposed instead of as a as a skill like that you have to beat. And since he's uh, since he's you know kind of got the same experience as you, it's gonna be flat as well. Actually, I'm going to give him a minus one modifier. He's somewhat distracted by the news report, and he feels a little bit guilty. Mm. Oh, no, he, uh, he he still kind of manages to beat you uh, overall. This isn't one hand. This is like over, over yeah, all the hands yeah. you play. But you're not, you're not paying, playing for money. Uh, he, he, he thanks you for the game. Uh, like, you, you seem to have bonded a little bit with him over, over you know, the course of the last day. Uh, you, you, you seem to be two of, of the same type. Um, what is, is, is anybody else want to do anything? Like it's, it's definitely lunchtime now. Or we'll uh... well, actually, actually I said I was going to take uh, orders. Okay. Does anybody, unless y'all want to make a trip to the dining cart. Yeah. The, 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 Dining compartment uh, is 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 very close by. It's only you know two compartments back. If if people want to go out one there, one is probably more than enough to go. Um, which order? I have no clue which which. One's a bowl of. I'm gonna pick up uh, an order of fries, so I can go with my uh, hydro burger and whatever they have to. Is this like a like a restaurant where you order, or do they just have like a buffet out or something? Uh, it's it's a restaurant where you order. They can prepare things very quickly. Okay. Actually, Twitch wants fried chicken. Better. That. What do you want, big All right, guy? So. Uh, he uh. He thinks about it for a moment, and uh. He uh he kind of. He says, uh, uh, the, the Centron burger looked good last time. He, he, he looks kind of disappointed that he didn't get to eat, uh, his, his burger from the, the, the hotel. Really big burgers? Uh, yeah, those were, those were really big, juicy burgers, but, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you might have to order two. Um... He uh he he just he says uh this is there a roulette function? Like he, he kinda laughs Special at this. Special of the and day like, it is. Yeah, he 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 laughs and he, he waves a hand at you. He's like, I'm not very picky. All right. So uh you all you all place your orders. Um and uh goes down the hall. Oh yeah, if if you go down the hall, um to, to place your orders, that's that's certainly fine. Uh, you you go down into the uh, the the rear compartment of the uh, of the car, and the kitchen area and the dining area are across from each other. The dining area is kind of like a lounge area as well. It's got a really big panoramic window um, that is uh, is digitally enhanced to where people can zoom in on areas of of the scene that they're ha uh, passing by, and it also functions uh, as you know a holographic display if they want to bring up news things in little boxes. Um, there's there's booths and tables and stuff in that section. It's very wide open. Uh, there's there's nothing really separating that area of the car from the rest. Uh, the kitchen area, there is an open area where you can talk to people, place orders, collect orders and stuff, and then the rest is sort of enclosed. Um, but uh, you don't, oddly enough, you don't smell any food coming out from there. Um, it, it, it's just kind of weird. Because it's 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 open. You, so you... I approach the order counter. Yeah, um, a uh, like a really really short, really stout Carthen um, is is behind the counter. Four arms. He's got kind of like a uh, 
a scraggly look to him. Uh, he's pretty portly. Uh, he's a good two, like uh, I guess a foot and a half shorter than uh, Phyrix, uh, Phyrixis is. Uh, he's he's actually like slightly shorter than than normal human height even. Um, he's like, yeah, what can I get for you? Uh, it seems I need. Do you, you have Centron have burgers, or do you have something that's like it? It's like, yep, yep, that's a popular choice. All right, order of fries. Uh, he nods. Fried chicken? Question mark. Nothing he, like that. He narrows his eyes a bit, like he's thinking. He's like, yeah, I know that. And he, he like, as as he's he's doing this, he's like typing with one hand, like in a in a holographic display. And what would be your daily special quote quote, or something that's unique? He grins like an extremely wide grin, um, and he's like, uh, Lesuvian mollusk soup. All right, we'll get one of those. Two of those actually. So. All right. And that's that's the order. All right. Yeah, That'll he, he takes today. it all, and uh, he's like. Uh, what what compartment are you in? Um, uh, I I I can take it back for for us. Um, I'll just wait in the line, lounge area across the way. You are, by the way, in compartment five. I still say it that way. Um, he says it's it's not necessary, but okay. Uh, it'll be uh. He he looks at his screen. It looks like the computer is like computing how long it's gonna take. It'll be nine minutes. That'll be fine. Um, and uh, he he asks you to uh like you know swipe your your boarding pass. And I do so. Uh, as as you do so, your hand kind of like. It's obvious you're supposed to swipe it on, on like the middle section of the counter. Your hand mm-hmm. passes through a very, very slight force field uh, that you couldn't see before. Like it's, you, you can hardly even feel it. You only kind of feel a tingling against your skin. Um, and uh, and like you, you suddenly are aware of, of why smells from the kitchen are not wafting out of the kitchen. Ah, uh, okay. It's kind of strange. You'd think they'd want it to waft, then they'd buy more. No, you never, you never know uh, what what appeals to the many different races. Uh, like maybe pizza smells like toxic to uh, to like Carthens or something. You, you you don't know. They they a lot of a lot of places that cater to multiple races try to just go neutral with a lot of things. Um. So is is. You know, anybody doing anything while you're waiting, or are you just going to get your food? Well, most of us are in the apartment. How much did that cost me, slash, like, uh, if charge me? If you, uh, if you look at your, uh, at your boarding pass, there's, like, a accept yes, no, um, and there's, like, a, there is a charge for, um, like 50 credits. So is this the if I push yes, it'll charge immediately? Yeah. It'll I only have 48 credits. I think I might try to. Um, or do I still have the cred stick that has 270 credits on it? You've got your cred stick. You right, can, I, use, I, I use that. Yeah, you can link to that. I don't have 50 credits. I only have 48 credits. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, I'm keeping track. That has 220 credits now. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, I will I will mention this. Um, Marcus, that credit chip you picked up off the dead guy. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. 303 credits. Booyah. Do I need to do anything in particular to use it, or is it just like cash? Uh, It's anonymous if you want. Does any you know anything of interest flash up on the hollow display as I sit and wait? Uh, you you basically get the same sort of things as uh, as you know what that was on the news. Like there's there's a. I mean, is there watching... like this is the blah 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 ocean. These are some of the creatures that live here. 
oh, if 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 you actually like 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 do any sort of request at all, thing. like when you when you look at it, um, options pop up in front of your eyes, and when you move your gaze, like they kind of cycle through. Like uh, biological of, studies, aquatic life. One one of them is like you know the cent Centron Ocean or like, you know, information, local information and stuff. And you kind of cycle through that and you like it, it starts cycling through videos of, of, you know, like, you know, kind of national, national geographic sort of videos of, uh, of the ocean. And then like you start going, like tailoring your search further. And all this is basically just happening by you focusing your gaze on, on this holographic panel. Uh, and, and like the longer you focus on something, it like basically sort of accepts that that's what you're interested in. Um, and, uh, it starts to go into like undersea life and stuff. You see the, the majestic ultra lobster, um, go, you know, like going Raise about on, on, on the not sea quite, floor. It's not as big as the ones at home. Yeah. It's, it's certainly not as big as the sea, sea life, uh, on, on your home planet, but, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's. Is big as he uh, starts trying to cycle it to like new discoveries and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. There's there's like a there's talk of a of a sea worm that was discovered at the bottom of the ocean on the like he's the very, western ocean. He's like super interested in this kind it's, of stuff. It's extremely long, like ninety feet, but it's only a couple feet wide. Uh, it's very weird uh, in terms of like it has some regenerative regenerative properties. Um, but it's it's at the very bottom of the ocean, and uh, it, like, you, you see that for later. <laughs> you see pictures of this thing like bioluminescing and, and this thinks about it. Uh, and yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of what pops up. Uh, and then yeah, nine nine minutes to you know to the minute um, after your order is placed, every last bit of food is finished at the exact same time. Wow, that's and, impressive. And uh, and it's all placed out on a you know on a tray. And he says, uh, "I hope you enjoy. If uh, if there's any problems, and if uh, if anybody has any sort of uh, uh, toxic uh, toxic reaction, just just press one of the call buttons." All right, I'll do so. Thank you, and have a nice day. He nods to you. And so, uh, you know, it's it's been about eleven minutes since uh, since. Um, Ray departed. <laughs> yeah, Ray, Ray departed, and uh, and you know, she comes back with uh, with delightfully smelling food. So I hand out one cent or two centron burgers to um, Braxis, Braxis, Braxis. Yeah. Yes, Braxis. he he looks he looks super excited that you ordered him two instead of one. Like he didn't want to he didn't want to impose, but uh, he he was really hungry. And then I give Twitch his fried chicken. And the order of fries to Akron, I guess he's going to have his instant burger. Quote, quote. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, I'm totally breaking that out. And then I, ha I hand uh, Oliver Green a La Suvian Mollusk Soup, which I also have one for myself. As usual, Akron will wait to eat the fries until after maybe 10, 15 minutes. I thought Ray no one else drops food. dead. You can't stand lobster. There's a difference. <laughs> uh, and this is not actually seafood. The Lasuvian Mollusk actually grows in uh like watery pits on the desert world of uh, the the Lusuvians come from um they're they're basically kind of like lakes almost so interesting fresh water not seafood yeah. per se yeah. <laughs> and uh and i guess marcus you didn't you didn't order anything were you just not hungry or did you uh, like stack on a power bar? what's green doing He's he's eating his mollusk. Oh, okay. Um, you can totally have one of my uh, instant burgers if you want. Yeah, I'll just do that. That's easy. Yeah. So Akron, you just like chuck an instant instant burger like across the uh, the compartment as everybody's starting to to dig in and like this thing's still in his package. So Ray like, is you know. willing to let him sample some of her mollusk soup if he wants. <laughs> so like so. the. the the, so I try the, the soup. You have no idea how tempted I was to have Max try to intercept it like a frisbee. <laughs> <laughs> One day. Um, One day. Yeah. So, uh, it's like you're all digging into your food and stuff. It's up to you whether or not you you like the taste. Um, 
the mollusk is especially somewhat slimy on the inside, but it's it's pretty strong in taste uh, and not like it, Very it's different. pretty exotic. Ray likes it, yeah. It's a little different. Munch, munch, crunch, crumble. So Oliver, Oliver is Mr. looks up. Is Green happy with his mystery food? Yeah, he actually looks a little bit more pleased. He's he's like he's slurping one of the tentacles down. He's like, hmm, this is good. He's like, I think I fought something like this once on God. What was that planish name? It's like it was as, it was big as a house. Did you win the fight? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, he 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 kind of like points a, a thumb over his shoulder. He's like, I got something back there to prove it. A little bit of revenge, then maybe. It's hard to keep track of them all. So, you know, you guys are digging in. Is there is any conversation you guys want to bring up? Uh, if not, Oliver is basically just going to kind of try to get to know you guys a little bit better. He, You can tell that he, uh, he, he likes Ray you guys. Ray will attempt to stretch. Uh, like, like, you said there was something like this. What, what, were, what were its properties? Did it have any interesting biological attributes? Uh yeah. Well, uh, he he stops and he looks up and he's it's it's like he's never really thought about it other than like how do you kill it? Uh, or or he's or, like or, or if you don't can, know that's okay it can, too. It can eat through power armor. Ray's eyes look look huge and go like literally that, eat through power armor. Or are we talking like that's acid that's a bit dangerous. Sort? Yeah. Yeah. He nods his head. He's like, uh, my buddy Jin. Uh, he just he just shakes his head. He goes back to his mollusk. Like he looks down at it, and he like maybe he he's not is enjoying his food quite as much. And then he just starts munching on it again. Uh, it is really obvious that he is extremely well traveled. Anybody who knows anything about the Galactic Marines, like he's been across sectors. So like this is this this might be a wonder for anybody uh, who is interested in like other cultures and stuff. There's no telling how many planets and cultures he's interacted with and potentially annihilated. Um, so yeah, uh, he just, he, he talks to you about like, he asks about your backgrounds just a little bit. Um, he, he kind of skips over, uh, over Phyrexis since he, he seems to be fairly antisocial. Uh, he uh when when he gets to Marcus he's like so uh where uh you 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 working for anybody now or are you you just freelancing uh in in between jobs as it were he nods um how uh how long have you uh have you been in the game Uh, hmm, I can actually kind of think about that a minute. Yeah, feel free to. Uh, like I, I think we we okay. wrote that you left home at like eighteen or nineteen. Yeah, yeah. There's not an actual age on the sheet, is there? Uh, yeah, that was actually something I neglected to put in there that I I thought that you could put into the notes section. Um, mm -hmm. if you want to insert a note under like your name or something, you could certainly write down your age there. Uh, uh, okay, I'll, I'll say going on maybe nine years. -ish. Okay. Yeah. Off, off and on. He's like, you you know how it is then. You, uh, you 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 come and go. You see a lot of places. See a see a lot of faces. Probably gonna inquire if he's ever run into any disruption weapons in his uh, adventures. That actually, like he 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 has. He nods. He's like, there was this one time uh, on this uh, the space station that we were we were investigating. Uh, we just we found it abandoned, and uh, oh, real real peculiar job that one. Just it was out in the middle of nowhere, um, like on the edge of one of the one of the systems in I think it was sector three, and uh, uh, distortion distortion weapons are nasty. We we didn't really know what it did it at first, but boy, we found out later. Probably 
actually ask uh, if he remembers which system in Sector Three, or roughly which system. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm curious. Um, I will give you a name. Let me, let me see here. Definitely one I might write down for reference. Uh, the Fihar system, F I H A R. Uh, Sector three is very far away. F I H A R. Yeah. Uh, if if you press him for details, he he goes on about how uh, how this you know it was it was some sort of automated defense uh, system set up before the scream, um, and uh, most of his platoon was wiped out, and that was actually kind of what prompted him uh, to uh, to start thinking about leaving the Marines. That's definitely very interesting information. In fact, I put a note of it uh, in my character sheet, even if we're ever near Fihar, I'm uh, very into looking that up. Akron, you made an interest in this disruption tech. You don't seem kind who would have a weapon. What makes it? Historical fascination. I think everybody in the compartment just looks at him and then <laughs> looks at him and said, I'm like, really? Yeah. Isn't that yeah. one eyebrow. Yeah. We'll, we'll accept that. Um, <laughs> all right. So. I'm trying to think about how I want to do this. Do we have a volunteer from the party who would like to roll one D100? Oh, oh. How about the gambling man? Oh, hell. <laughs> <laughs> if you roll a one, I'm going to laugh. This will be just, uh, one D100 is always kind of terrifying. One D100 is strange. Shazam. It's terrible. Okay, let me think about how this uh, how this affects things. Dun, dun, in the dun. meantime, what makes you interested in that that giant mollusk? Right? Uh, you you are. Oh, you um, oh, that giant mollusk. I have an interest in any kind of uh, xenobiological organism. I, I set out to find their properties and see if they can have any medical application. Maybe a, a salve, an ointment, a potion, you never know. Things that were de haven't been developed yet. And I have Akron's some personal reasons too. But... Medical? Okay. <laughs> well, yes, I'm trained in many medical arts. I'm a medical professional, actually. I'm, I'm sure I could surely patch you up if you took a bullet wound. Something I don't think anyone else here could do. It's like he doesn't buy that you're looking into uh, unusual life forms for medical purposes. You, you guys do notice that that Star is rolling random dice right now, right? Yep, yep. That's, that's, <laughs> him, doing, that's him doing his DM rolls. All right, approximately one third of the way through the trip. Um. Uh, let's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see. How? How? Have you guys been paying any attention at all as to what's going on in the rest of the train? Or are you just, you know, these rooms are really well insulated. There's no actual window. Uh, like there, there, there is, but it's it's by default set to totally opaque. You have to set it to transparent to look out, and it's not actual glass. It's well, it's like a. I, I gave. All over the window seats. I assumed he was going. Well, uh, the... I'm talking about the window to the inside of the. Uh, the car, like oh, to no. the. Um. My security camera set up. By the way, uh, did you set? The where where the, did you set those up? By the way. Uh, when I looked at the map, I wouldn't have set it at the end of the hall. I probably would have set one on one side of the door and one on the other side of the door to cover both uh, both approaches instead. I, I thought we were at the end of the hall when I set it okay. the, around the bend. Um. All right. So, do you have any sort of programmed warning? Um. Like, if a certain am amount of people are in the hallway at once, or if somebody's moving at a certain velocity or something, like, people are going to be moving all throughout this thing all the time. So just simple motion is probably not going to be the best uh, effective. Well, what I can do, like, with a regular uh, 
a lot of regular cam programs I've seen, is you can set it for a different level of motion to give you different detection. So I could set it up theoretically so it would require a uh, larger amount of motion to make a larger ping. So uh, if there's like a lot of people, it might make a louder or a different sounding ping than it might if it's a small amount. Okay. Um, you notice pings are becoming a little bit more frequently outside? Um, like this is, you know, soft, just kind of playing in that earbud in your ear. Um, and like maybe you notice there's kind of an uptick in foot traffic. Does Set anybody the have to one way transfer or two? Uh, it's it's one way. Oh, well, then no reason why we can't have it on. Well, like you, you can you can set it to opaque if you don't want to be bothered by people walking, you know, around outside. Like if you if you're trying to get some rest or something. Um, for security purposes, like there's no reason why you wouldn't set it to you know transparent. Um, so yeah, you notice there's there's kind of an uptick in foot traffic. Um, you can't really hear anything outside. Uh, is anybody currently? Uh, like looking at the news or anything, or are you just talking, milling about? Like, what what are you doing? At this point, I probably uh, have a. You're couple several windows. hours into the. In, you're like maybe six six hours into the trip. I'd Which probably be probably... working on the. And I will Which... I will actually ping where we are right now. Actually, it's it's not seven. It's more like eight hours. I say, are we a third of the way time wise? Oh. I was, I, I, that's all I know if we're actually past the other stations yet. Yeah, it time wise, no, uh, because like once you get out onto that open straightaway, uh, you go much faster. Yeah, that's if it was a third away time wise, we'd probably be in those other stations. That was, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, uh, what I'd probably be doing during the time is offloading some of the Argus web data to reset it and also trying to maybe, uh, have a window open to work on integrating that with Sarah. Though at the same time, I at the uh, would obviously be keeping the windows open for the uh, security cameras as well. Probably have a couple different windows open. So, so let, nobody has the news specifically open. I probably wouldn't have the news. I'd probably have whatever amounts to local events on the train. I don't know if they have like a like an event database or something like that. Yeah, I I guess so. Um, nothing's on there just yet. Uh. After a few minutes after you notice the foot traffic has his upticked Victor, um, you get like a, a, an increasingly large series of pings and you look to your, your camera and you see like there's people running down the hall, uh, not like armed people, like like passengers. And they seem to like be somewhat panicking almost they're running from the, the 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 rear of the car and like you can see them jump like you know not jumping but like running to their rooms and then getting into their into their compartments and locking the doors probably gonna hit the save close program on my uh sarah coding like the, i guess it'd be like the equivalent of clicking x in windows so the other windows so i'll get bigger the cameras and then immediately uh call out we've got a problem uh everybody looks up uh, at this, I assume. Can I swipe my data tablet feed to the uh, the in like room uh, oh, yeah, video yeah. thing? Yeah, you can definitely do that. Okay, so I'll, every, I'll everybody do that. everybody sees a feed of the hallway. Um, there's there's you know people like scrambling to get into rooms and stuff. Uh, if you have any sort of view at all of the passenger car, or not the passenger car, like the lounge, like you can see people huddled around um, like data feeds, like they're pointing at things and. And, uh, like, they're, it's obvious they're watching something. How, how does everybody respond? It's some kind of news. Guys, let's flip on the news. So, I guess Ray pushes the button for holographic display. Yeah, um, you, you push on the news, um, like, you've, you've got your, your general news feed. Uh, it looks like there's some sort of weather report coming in. Um, and I as, the as you're doing as well. that, like you see some, it, it looks like there's some space tracking going on. Um, as you do, you hear a chime. Um, it's the same chime that happened when, uh, when the train was announcing that it was going to leave. Um, no, it's, it's, uh, 
we regret to interrupt this uh, this transit to the to the next station at Dellen, um, but we have some important information uh, that needs to be disseminated to all passengers. This is an official uh, emergency announcement. At approximately, and, and like the voice stops for a second. Uh, this is definitely not pre-recorded or anything. Um, I'm trying to think of what time it is. If you guys have been going for like eight or nine hours, yeah, okay. Uh, at approximately 3 p.m. local time, um, Centron Orbital Defense uh, reported uh, an unknown contact uh, in orbit uh, at a high velocity. And like you, you, you see, uh, like if if you still have the the news open, um, you basically see like this white streak in in the sky, um, or at least in in space. And uh, it, it's it's not like the best image. Um, uh, approximately 45 minutes ago, Centron Orbital Defense uh, opened fire on what is now believed to have been an unidentified comet, which has uh, which has intersected the orbital path of Centron Five. And uh, like, it, you're you're this is not like happening in time with the. Uh, with the broadcast because it's not from the same people but like you see you see pictures of satellites I'd, I'd like to in make orbit. a science roll to determine how bad that is for the planet um yeah yeah sure uh like the more information you get the better your science roll like they uh it's like you you see on the screen like class um, class f um comet uh like on the screen like the screen is obviously muted as this emergency alert is playing uh yeah you'd know um that uh a class f comet is uh is kind of like a a smaller to medium sized comet um that has nothing to do with the speed or velocity or anything you know that if this thing strikes with sufficient velocity um a, 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 you know the the wrong angle uh that could be potentially like catastrophic for the planet on the other hand um you know provided that it's not striking at a high velocity or it's striking at some sort of angle it's landing in the ocean like you know that like these things sometimes happen uh it's still a really big deal like these don't think these things don't happen often um with so much of centron being water it's very unlikely that any sort of land mass would be hit uh the 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 radio or the the announcement uh, over the intercom continues um and uh and they say uh it appears that somewhere between 70 and 80 percent of the comet was efficiently vaporized by centron orbital defense and, and this is kind of in in the same instant you're seeing like orbital satellites firing at these things uh like you don't actually see lasers it's like you see heat blooms from these things and then large chunks of this comet just wash away into space um uh unfortunately however uh orbital defense uh has reported to uh to centron uh, magline south uh and our our weather affiliates in tracking that the comet was able to penetrate the atmosphere and approximately 22 minutes ago made impact uh in the western centron sea um there's probably like an infographic popping up now very similar to the map you guys have and um it's 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 off it's technically off of the map that you you guys have uh but not terribly far um a uh, a severe uh Typhoon warning has been issued for the South Centron Sea. Uh, the train is currently lowering in velocity, and we will be entering emergency procedures. Uh, there is, uh, like the, you know, it, it keeps going on with this this emergency message giving you uh, information. But the gist of it is uh, is something really bad has happened. Um, you know, a, a a comet, or at least fragments of a comet have have hit the uh, hit the ocean um and there is some sort of typhoon warning uh for your area 
you guys can somewhat feel the train slowing down. Like the inertial dampers on the train have, have been doing a really good job. Um, but like you're at a point where like you guys should not be slowing down. So this is not a normal place. And uh, like, you know, this infographic pops up and it shows like the, the train, how it's supposed to in emergency procedures, like slowing down and then like mag clamping to the rail and stuff. Um, there's, there's several emergency kind of like pylons that provide more support. Um, and the train is, is supposed to basically calculate its velocity to slow down to where it comes to a stop there. Um, but yeah, people are kind of freaking out back there that the, the train announcement like asks people to be calm. Um, the, the train is designed to weather, uh, severe, severe storms and, uh, and, you know, tsunami events, stuff like that. Um, how, how does everybody respond? I'm not a scientifically trained professional, but that looks really bad. I informed them of all this stuff, but yeah. Uh, for instance, I, I don't think there's anything we can like do. Like pissing his than, pants almost. Other than lock down for the night. Um, stay away from the God. windows. Well, there are no <laughs> windows. It's all you, you say that, stuff. Akron, and like you just see Oliver like rubbing his temples. Like why? Why does it not go smooth? Why does it never go smooth? <laughs> <laughs> Get shot at the whole There's way, the whole and now we're dropping a comment right? on us. I don't think we can really do much about it other than pop other people into the cab. Um, Are there any emergency procedures for evacuating this train, or is it... Uh... We're in the at... middle of a fucking ocean, Akron. Yeah, um... <laughs> Like the train is supposed to clamp onto this thing is is nominally safe for like even really high typhoon stuff, but like this is this is like a, a magnitude higher sort of event. Uh, you don't really know if this is like the train if if, if it's it designed for this sort of catastrophe. Um, uh, feasibly at these kind of emergency pylons, there might be something. Obviously, uh, like during the broadcast, like they they say that like south mag magline tracking has our position and you know emergency forces are standing by stuff like that uh but yeah you're you're out in the middle of the ocean um if you're looking at the emergency procedures and stuff like several of the cars uh are like all of the cars are designed to basically be airtight um it can nominally float if the cars are not breached Let's get everything that can be thrown around strapped down. That's a very, a very good, good suggestion. Like a very large I'm little crate. I recommend uh, you strap Max down as well. Yeah, so you've you've got this this lock box. It's uh, it's you know currently underneath one of the benches. There's there's a way of easily, um, easily securing it. I do not want to see a very large metal projectile coming at my face. Um, and like it is, you know, as the announcement goes off and it and your your control is kind of returned, like you see like satellite photos, um, uh, like live images and stuff of this this massive disturbance in the ocean, and like closer to uh to where the comet hit, it's just like there's this pit in the ocean, like where water has been vaporized. Um, and it's really unclear, like closer to the, the point of impact, like just what this sort of thing entails. Uh, and it, it seems like it's taking a, uh, a bit of distance for this thing to pick up speed, but like the further away from the, the impact crater, like the more noticeable this impact is, uh, and like you can see several small islands are like apparently washed away closer to the, closer to where this thing is affecting. Um, yeah, so, uh, I guess you guys are all trying to secure things. Um, they, they possible. come over and they say, uh, it is, it is estimated that we have approximately 34 minutes before the outermost waves, uh, uh, connect with, uh, with our, with our line of travel. So you have some time. Is there is there anything else you guys want to want to do? Like you're, 
your your surveillance shit is kind of going nuts out there. Probably going to leave that out for the moment, but I'm going to get the data pad ready to uh, pack my things. So I'm ready, got them all like loaded into some sort of a luggage. Have my data pad ready to grab and secure on me but right before the impact happens. And uh, yeah, other than that, I want to make sure everything's strapped down or uh, not going to go flying at us like I was mentioning. I'm, I'm going to assume that the cargo compartment was secured, but I can't exactly check that. So other than that, uh, it's just us, so we're basically just stuck here waiting. Yep. I wanna, like, is there any kind of oxygen line or, or in case of emergency, please use face mask for oxygen. Oh look, yes, look for there, air, there are know. definitely emergency air, air lines um, up at the ceiling. Okay. This thing, this thing is pressurized. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah, they're there. And you know, it, as you guys have questions, like I'll, I'll tell you, like, yeah, if it's included in the emergency procedures, that definitely is. Let's work like, out some way to fasten ourselves when the uh, this hits too. Tie ourselves to those um, gravity rails or something that the ones that were well, you've out got of the you've wall. got restraints like for you know acceleration and stuff. Um, so nominally those should like it's it's restraints kind of like an X strap. Said restraints. Uh yeah yeah they're they're adjustable. They're supposed to you know cover most bipeds. There, there are special compartments for like non bipeds that would, they would get assigned to. They look pretty snug, and he definitely he looks frightened as shit. Like the this is the first time he's ever been in a train, and then this happens. Calm it's down. for man. life. This is this is hardly a typical situation, but surely these trains are prepared for such things, as you saw. Um. All right, so it's like a gonna... level higher than usual. Yeah, if if we're gonna be if we're gonna be ending at eight, um, which is in like five minutes, I guess we'll we'll end right about now. I will give you a little bit of a closeout. Um, as as the train slows to a stop, and uh, and like the the mag rails kind of clamp onto this thing, and the whole train like clamps onto this thing, kind of like a, a millipede almost, like it's really fastened on there, uh, and it. Like external things start going down over the windows to 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 block them. Uh, you see, like dark clouds overhead uh, from the uh, from the west. Um, the the seas the seas are definitely very choppy and dark. Um, it's it's getting on into evening as it was. Um, none of you you know none of you are leaving your car. You've you've got your door secured. I'm assuming. Um, as all this is happening, uh, Akron, you you know you you kind of glance over to the uh, to the security cameras, um, and you uh, you see a pair of figures uh, coming down the hall, and they have they have weapons. Oh, and well, uh, I was gonna say, Star, that it, if it gets down to ten minutes before the impact, I want to use Omen. Okay, all right. Well, we can we can do that. Um, omen. 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 omen Sight. I left my club somewhere that's uh, retrievable, even if it's uh, you know bunkered down somewhere. Page twenty-nine. <laughs> Take it by weapons. You mean guns too? The the precog may force a brief subconscious examination of future possibilities. The precog must have a relatively straightforward choice before her, um, perhaps to open a box, swallow a pillar, go into a spaceport bar. Uh, what what is your straightforward choice? Oh, uh, stay or go. I guess what it comes down to. Stay in the room or leave the room. Yeah, I think that's the only choice there is to make at that point. So, um, staying in the room is the safe thing to do. Uh, is leaving there... the but, yeah. Uh, is, is there any way to fuse the door shut? No, not unless you like have a welding device that you haven't mentioned to me. Oh no, I meant like uh, you know convince it that it needed to lock into airtight mode. Uh, or something. you you could potentially do that. Um, but yeah, we 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 see Akron's eyes start to widen as as these two uh, figures are coming down the uh, the hallway. Um, like you you're you're camera footage is is not the best uh like they're 
they're coming down, uh, and they do actually appear to have like something other than stun batons. And that will be where we end for uh, the week. Awesome. It's definitely so, uh, a, uh, a cliffhanger. So unfortunately, uh, if you guys were looking forward to it, no straightforward combat. Uh, <laughs> that roll of an eight was hilarious because that was literally the time where you guys were leaving. If you had rolled a seven or lower, you guys would have gotten into a like a shootout with them in the middle of the night or something. Uh, but yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Things on the horizon, figuratively and literally, for the next session. Dum, dum, dum. Nice. Definitely uh, looking forward to the next one, man. I don't mind that they're not being combat all the time. I, I'm completely okay with that. This yeah. Game, you don't want combat all the time. It's usually brutal, and your reward is to live. Yeah. Yes. And my character is not exactly uh, a commando either. <laughs> So does anybody uh, have anything they they you know need uh, answered? Have any comments or anything? Do they think they completed any of their goals? I know those are probably going to be a little bit scarce this time around. Um, but rest Find assured. Find information leading to a meaningful specimen. Uh, Maybe. Uh, that's, that's, I you put four fifty on it, so I don't know. I know during that couple hours I was starting to uh, download what I had of the Argus web data, but I probably was kind of working on Sarah, but I don't really think that would accomplish a goal. Cause it was but I haven't very, actually uh... went and found it yet. I, just I think you have, both, thing. you have both begun uh, to kind of complete those goals you were talking about. Um, like, you're, you're working on your integration with the Argus web, Victor. Uh, you haven't, like, said anything about actually yeah, exactly. integrating it with her yet. Uh, yeah, you can definitely get it. that out of the way. Um, as far as as finding information leading to meaningful finder specimen, I think like you have to sort of confirm that it has mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. potential. Um, but you know, it it has the potential to fulfill that goal. Um, anybody anybody else think that they did anything? Would uh, would smuggling stuff through security qualify for yes, Marcus's yes, belief that, of kind of not counts. following rules? That ultra counts. Uh, so, yeah, you get 350 XP. Oh, yeah, that, 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 was, a, that was a good move. So you're uh, you're up to 1,000. Halfway there. Uh, and you can change that belief or you can keep it the same. I, I think that's a really great belief to just keep. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it, at least for the time being. Yeah. Anyway. Um... Out of curiosity, how many skill points do you get at the uh, per level? You see uh, right above, um, uh, at the top of your your sheet next to if like you're where it an says expert, expert, you get three. Everybody else gets two. There's a thing that says skill slash level. Oh, but what, okay. But when we do level, you still have to find training in it. But can't do, it basically might... goes into unspent points. Unless but... you have training in it already. Yeah. I think I might try to uh, pick up a point of security just from kind of on-the-job experience at the next level I, when it rolls I around. Think, I think you could definitely find something in that. Um, next session is going to be super eventful, I will say. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things coming to a head. Uh, typhoon, Comet notwithstanding, and people in, in Corridor with guns. Um, I'm anticipating that you guys will probably wrap up the mission next session. Um... So you will you will have a lot of things to kind of uh, kind of resolve. Cool, man. Definitely a fun one. I'm looking forward to next week. Excellent. Cool. Yeah, I would we'll, make uh... a a very brief comment. Mm -hmm. uh, it seemed to be very specific to today. We probably don't need to be quite as meticulous in some of our planning and and doing as we are. Yeah, that's true. Um. But I I really appreciate creative thinking. Oh yeah, uh, especially on Victor's part. Um, I I've try I've been trying to balance it to where like some a lot of the actions you guys have taken have basically ensured that you have not gotten into some sort of trouble. Um, I will say like if you guys had not been taking a lot of the almost paranoid or actually <laughs> realistically paranoid actions that that uh, Akron was was 
taking um, or if they had been failures, you guys, you know, I have a few things in play in the city that would have basically ambushed you or something. Um, so, you know, that was, that was one of the reasons why, you know, there was no combat really this week. Um, what out of gameplay, the, the reason why that the room got shot up below you instead of yours was like, you basically managed to convince, um, convince Phyrixis, uh, to switch sides and like, he's no longer providing them accurate information and they they kind of they're they're going on people who apparently possibly accepted the uh the job invites uh or the the job um post and they just got the number of the apartment wrong uh if if he had if he had not been totally convinced like to, to follow you or something or or things had gone differently like th those bullets would have actually been coming through your windows um, so there's like a lot of things that could have gone differently. It's just because you took so many successful actions, uh, you know, it there was not a whole lot of conflict in this one. Okay, I, I'm hoping it wasn't. Good uh, I'm hoping it wasn't very boring, but. Uh... Oh no, it was great. I actually, I, I oh, yeah. prefer uh, situations that aren't always combat. It makes the combat actually uh, tense when it happens. Yeah, now we got two guys coming as of guns that we have done. Say my first chance. And try and use telekinesis to take one of their guns away, which should be interesting. Because I don't think I've seen any of you actually see me use telekinesis yet. Yeah, yeah I don't think anybody knows about it. Yeah, good point. Victor's, Victor, your character is going to have, like, conniptions. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be quite a shock. Granted, my, my role to do so is probably going to be horrible. It's probably, like, unarmed, and it uses remote manipulation of a strength of 10 to do it, which already has a negative 2 for attack rolls. And then they get a will save of some sort to actually resist it in the first place. So it's probably going to be bad. Yeah, this could be interesting. All I've got to defend me is a, a friggin' bar I pulled off the wall. <laughs> Not exactly the best option. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, thing, things could... Things could happen. Yeah, they get we a don't. mental effect save, and then I gotta make a roll at like negative, like negative three or negative two or something. I I will say um, that those rolls that were going on, uh, you know, did determine some things, uh, and uh, it it should be interesting. I and I also will say that this didn't just come out of the blue with the comet. Uh, I was trying to, to come up with some sort of non-gun threat for you guys to potentially deal with if the roll was sufficient. Yeah, but and, in the uh, middle of the ocean, there's, other than batting down, there's not much we can do about that. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Uh, Surviving it once it's capsized should be interesting. Yeah, if, if that if that occurs, like, this is this is going to be, you know, the part of the movie where, like, the the team has to survive the weather, like... It's it's not it's not that you you don't have a whole lot of things to do. It's uh, I'm anticipating the scene to be very very exciting. You guys are probably safe because uh, you're working with him, but Ekron's totally the guy in all those movies that always sells out the rest of the passengers for a chance <laughs> at the living. So this should be amusing. So like Akron hacks into the security system and just like dumps the rear half of the train or something. The uh, whole train's not gonna make it. It's gonna drag us down with it. Disconnect. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. I don't think that works if the whole train's a millipede. <laughs> anyway, guys, this should be a fun uh, fun session next week for sure. I'm looking forward to it big time. Yep, I will. I will definitely catch you guys then. Um... And I know I'm probably seeing uh, Cloud and Foster before then uh, for Apocalypse World. And I should be seeing you guys in about an hour for uh, <laughs> Megamex. So see you guys I'm in a little bit. The recording. All right, have fun.